Everyone, welcome to Geek Volution. Yes, the whole channel. We're assuming this is the first time you've ever watched a video here. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Eric. Eric, that was a weird introduction, but thanks for getting us started today. It started well. We're yeah, no, yeah, it's it's good. Uh, today we are going to do something we've never done before, and something that I have considered and decided that's dumb. Let's never do that. We're going to do it anyway. Uh, and it'll actually be a double first because this will be the first time uh, if. If I'm, I think I'm right about this. That that we'll be doing a commentary where we're actually, where you'll actually hear the audio of what we're commentary on. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've done one or two where you actually see and hear everything, but this is just one where you're seeing us. You'll be hearing the audio, but through a real low tech through the speakers as, as we're listening to it. Yeah. We're gonna do a commentary on a commentary. This is probably a terrible idea. This this is this is something Eric wanted to do. Um, it seems like it could be fun. It could be fun. Yeah. So we we'll see what this is like. Um, the reason, of course, we're gonna uh, we're on camera and we're gonna pump the audio just through the computer speakers is because uh, there, there will probably be probably be a little bit less of us just co talking constantly because we're actually we actually have to respond to things we're hearing these guys yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to do the commentary for the Spawn movie. And I have done a normal commentary on this movie with Dan Torrey shortly after Spawn year. And now, I and this is a thing I never thought I would revisit, really, uh, in, in any way. But um, I thought it was done with Spawn. That was real. <laughs> real for, uh, for those of you that don't know, I've already sold my comic book collection. I, I mean, I have broken up with Spawn. Not my whole comic My Spawn comic book collection. Um, and I will probably rebuy some of the stuff I like in trade. But, um... At least you know art. So the Morrison, like in so, so the Morrison run. Yeah, the three issues of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some pockets, there's stuff, you know, and 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 the early stuff, some of that art's classic, um, but to me. But anyway, so uh, we're we're gonna listen to the, some of this commentary is crazy, and that's how this story was. I was I was busting on a comment that somebody makes in that commentary because I listen to commentaries and I remember things from commentaries that I listened to when I was like 14. I was like, it's really dumb that this guy says this in this commentary. And then we were talking about the commentary, and we're like, let's commentary, commentary. Yeah, so part of this is just, if you've never listened to this commentary, we can kind of deliver it to you, and you can you can, you can can hear it without having to necessarily watch the film, you know, if that appeals to you. Uh, but this is also one of those weird commentaries where uh, it's different people in different rooms, and they're clip it's all clipped together. Yeah, and yeah. It's McFarlane clearly all by himself, probably not actually look. No, you know he is. I think looking at it because he's like, because because he'll yeah, be like, yeah. this, this is this part where this really yeah, cool yeah. violent thing happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's anyway, for the kids. There's some there's some wild stuff that gets said in this, and uh, we, we there's a lot of acting like this this looks and was it looks better than and was hobbled together better than it really was and 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 not just a matter of not having historical perspective like even for this time so anyway this that's what we're going to do we're going to do a commentary on a commentary uh everybody ready if you want to watch it with us uh, uh you can you can start when i say now but um actually well you don't want to do that that's a bad wait, idea wait for him to swim yeah, no 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 you're not going to watch it with idea. us that's a weird idea no no cuz if you did cuz if you did that then you'd be listening to your audio and our audio with it, and that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, you could watch, you could play the movie, but yeah. not the movie with commentary. That's true, you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. way you would with a normal podcast. So that's not a bad idea. Or the way that you would with a normal commentary. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Right, except usually you would have the audio for that movie playing also. Yeah, you just keep it lower. You just keep it lower, but anyway. Okay, so um, here we go. Everybody ready? We're gonna do this thing. Let's do this. Here we go. This is uh, I, I should probably. I mean, you're gonna hear it, but I should probably. So this is this is Tom McFarlane. This is the, the director, uh, Mark Azy to pay uh, Clint Goldman, who produ who is a producer, and uh, Spaz Williams, the the uh, visual effects supervisor guy. Oh, oh, so so the guy that wrote Spawn isn't isn't even on the commentary. No, he's not. I thought he was mm -hmm. one of the guys. Huh? Or I would have assumed he was one of the guys. No, but he might be some. He might be on one of the commentaries. I don't think so. I think I think those are all McFarlane on the on the animated series. Does he work on that? Because doesn't he work on that also? I don't know. You're I want to. I want to see. See. Don't call me that. <laughs> and nobody expect me to remember everything because uh, it's been two years since I did Spawn Year, and I have. 
ejected. That could be a fun experiment. I feel like, like I've ejected some of that out the airlock. That but. could be a fun experiment to grab something, something spawn and review it in a vacuum, like away from spawn here. I mean, you and I see the word fun in very different lights. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. If you want to watch the film with us, timestamp zero, uh, and get ready to press play when I say now. We'll go ahead and do that. Are you ready, sir? You ready to Here swim? we go. I'm ready to swim. Here we go. All right. Everybody, please press play right now. Welcome to New Line Home Video's special edition of Spawn. Welcome to the special, special edition of Dupay. the Spawn DVD. Producer of the Tim commentary Tim on the special Tim edition. Tim supervisor, Steve Spaz Williams, and the creator of Spawn, Todd McFarlane. So Spaz, how did you get that name, Spaz? the director of Spawn. Oh, I'm not going to respond. Why did you name the dog after yourself? Is that all you're going to say? Well, you said briefly. It's a great well, no, but you can say a little bit about like, who you are, where you came from. I'm not as in love with hearing my voice as you are. Ooh, that looks oh, awful. You're in love with looking <laughs> at yourself. <laughs> Come on. No, you can't commentary. Well, I will do a Google okay. right again. You have to only ahead. talk about what care. they're okay. saying. Okay. The same ring around the rosy, big boy. Mark, you know? Come we don't on, have rules for this. Say something about who you are. Okay, Mark to pay. Take two. Go ahead. Go ahead, Puffy. Come on. Part of the reason we're doing this too is because we watched a crazy. Clinton Paul Goldman. Um, no, Clint Goldman, I produced Spawn. We Catholic watched a crazy man. interview with McFarlane. Spaz that we wished we had done this with. Yeah. Yeah. For Spawn. My name's Todd McFarlane. Just to give a little bit of background on uh, who I am and what my Tell us, influence Todd. is on this movie. Break here, down. Who's this, who's this Joker? Uh, I created Spawn. That was an awful opening? Uh, visually I didn't remember that the movie opened like that. I was in high school. Uh, but I There's a really reason that did not make my top film, 10 film openings I made my career films. initially in comic books. Uh, I worked for both Marvel comic Comics and DC. Making comic I books. Back, like that. I'm not make Hulk, and, and actually good. made my name and my career in, yeah. that, in that field. Yeah, sorry, Doug. On a character called Spider-Man. But uh, after doing <laughs> six, seven <laughs> years... He has no company, idea... I felt he's a little bit of an itch to? and like, what his audience is getting more yeah. down because he thinks character named Spider-Man stifled. Well, not just that, but he's like, he's like, well, I actually made suits, made my my uh, than, you know us the creative people that were my, in the my, trenches my, my, my career in, in, in comic books. So as if we're going to be surprised. And started a company named Oh, he comes from comics. The stated goal at that time he has no idea who's going to watch one. I was going to be or at least just listen to his commentary, which is fair because this is before commentaries were another icon. Remember that this was on the weekly. Wasn't this one of those that was on the laser disc? It certainly, certainly is on the on the, the DVD. Mouse, Isn't there a place where he says on this laser disc? Someday, Isn't it cool that you can listen to this now? I don't know if that's here or if that's on the animated series, but he says that somewhere. The character. I think it's the animated series because the animated series is just so a laser yeah, we disc on DVD. You have to flip it halfway through. I believe I was right. the first to but this arrive. one's weird because you have to flip it to listen to the commentary. So it might have had that. Seems like laser disc. Yes. And, uh, because why wouldn't you just have the track craft, on the part of the disc that yeah, has craft. the movie? Uh, it goes without saying that I think we all got in, got into trouble from time to time. But I think particularly Mark was, uh, I think he got himself a little Does bit of heat. He was, he was followed. They like assigned a chaperone to Mr. DePay, sort of followed him around. So I'll, I'll just, I'll tell one of our You're playing right into his head! Oh, uh, <laughs> fire away. Yeah, okay, okay, go I'll ahead. Tell one. Oh, I'll perfectly one. timed fire away. The, we used to have invite well done. <laughs> interesting people to come speak and show their art or their work. And one time we invited Somebody people to come this speak comment about mind fun. expansion, which is a very important topic. <laughs> oh, he said fire away and fire away. And afterwards we had a special dinner for him at the ranch. It's true, because George it, Lucas it's not necessarily what they were seeing while they were talking. And these guys might not have been watching the worst I've ever No, they were. They were. They were. They were. The worst I've ever heard is Spider-Man. to kick back and enjoy ourselves. I don't think I've ever listened to that It's Aviara and the director. The director size interesting. Aviara and this. Aviara. And lit up some cigars and began walking through the hallowed halls of this. Fabulous building. Commentary bits was part of the for place where we were. Which the director talking about the scene that just happened, and it's clearly him talking over the scene that just happened. Because they want you to get those nuances. In very interesting space. But Avi Arad's got to talk. Covered yeah. den with all kinds of wonderful antique toys and ridiculous other mementos. And we sat down with our feet up on the table again, time. drinking and smoking and yeah. talking about what we, what we would do if we ran this place. And immediately, immediately thereafter, about six. But man, when I was a kid, he was Caucasian kind of males. For some reason, males, I always felt like he was kind of couched with walkie talkies and, and stun this, guns. Like, really Asked scary thing we were doing there. Kids aren't supposed to look at, but we all wanted to. We explained to them that that we were important individuals. That my name was Scott Ross and Steve was Ed guy. Jones. They they look alike actually. Scott Ross and Ed Speaking Jones. Making action were, uh, figures about things that move. Industrial light magic at the time. The next day, of course, we got called in by the principal, who was you know, extremely angry, and whose name happened to be Scott Ross. Aren't she kind of cool? Totally upset. Scott was was 
and furious. I mean, he doesn't care that he's there. He's not giving two guys trying to have yeah. fun. Right? Martino is a, he's sure he's a cool guy. Like he told us if he'd have been he in there with us. I really like that guy. So yeah, we, we had a little hearing, actually. It was a, the, one of the most it's amazing It's a shame that he wasn't in, like, uh, the Red movie. We were working on Terminator 2 at the time. We were right in the, Marco and I were running the production with Dennis Muir, and we were right in the middle of the production. And so the first, the first See, thing they asked us is, were you guys... Is in, Spaz Williams in terms of George's sacred hallowed office, there are like hidden uh, special effects and guys. He does too, right? Probably, had no idea yeah, he just talked about that. He was totally that. wired for sound. And That's why I mentioned the first it. Well, see, see, is, see, you're getting, you're getting you that thing there. there. Well, we're not, well, we're not seeing Of course, I denied everything. Him beating uh, but her immediately before he leaves for his last mission. These Caucasian male right. security guards mm -hmm. now with we're not, we're not seeing the part where he's causing a miscarriage. And they began to read yeah. the minutes. <laughs> you know, they, the whole scene. They had it all down. Long hair, so black. We gotta just keep adding black, things to make hair, him whatever. as male, uh, unsympathetic as possible. On the desk at 10 7 p.m. I'm talking about spoiling. Crew again. cut. Caucasian male sat down in the other chair at 10:04 p.m. It was ridiculous. So <laughs> to make a long story short, they they wanted to to to. Uh, to, uh, they wanted to find all the facts. They assumed we'd done something terrible. I'm not sure what. To this day, I'm not sure what. But we were essentially banned from the ranch for life. And that became kind of our, our badge of honor. That for, I, for a year, right? Is this the beginning well, of the story? For life, for life yeah. Then, uh, really the only thing we did was change all the names of the Ewoks on the script. Yeah, there are a few things that we did do. <laughs> but we won't, we won't put them on record. One they of these days, George the will have to play a game of... Uh, I see you can find. Yeah, see you can find. We had a lot of fun back but, then. But, but, what happened to us? But what really yeah, brought us to the name band from the ranch was our, our good friends of ours. How bad of an idea Casey this Cannon experiment is. And Van yeah, especially, sure. who had worked for Jim on, here on we T2. Go. And, there, there he is, Alan McElroy. Uh, worked on Aliens a little bit with him. Not so much, but a little bit. Um, but uh, started their own company. And they named that company Band from the Ranch Entertainment Incorporated. <laughs> incorporated <laughs> in State, California. And uh, they've worked on quite a few movies, and of course, uh, they were one of the key Mark suppliers of special visual effects on Spawn. So, or is it as credits not only is there a credit for Industrial Light Magic, but also for that middle name Band stands the for the Alphabet. For me, I just wanted to bring Spawn to life on the screen. I wanted to make a Spawn comic book. We film. all did. So that was the whole. That was the whole attitude I wanted. Did you, visually, did you recognize story wise, the stylistically, to stay true to Spawn. So casting yeah, a part of Jason no, when you need to be an intelligent, oh, yeah, man yeah. who you could believe is someone who would had worked his way up in an organization, had had the power not only to control it but also to carry out his own agenda. But I was well, you failed miserably but to I was convey that in the film. I love two of my favorite movies. He was a star. I do not believe that he worked his way up, and that he has the power so to control the government. So we met with him. I was very excited. He brought a lot to the part, but of course, he didn't know Spawn. This is not his kind of movie. And I think uh, the story that Martin likes to tell is that he went home that evening and was having dinner with his grandson, and he. Who asked him, what are you doing these days, Grandpa? Well, this could be swearing. Spawn. His grandson said, Spawn is the coolest oh, fucking thing around. Oh, there, yeah, movie. that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, disclaimer then. Spawn. Spawn's the coolest fucking thing around. I gotta do that movie. <laughs> now, John is just an amazing actor. Really Which happily, his grandson was obviously, uh, you know, mentally the amazing amazing clown in the film. The clown needed See, to looking have this at this, all I'm thinking of are all the criticisms and, and uh, fearsome, maniacal and stuff that I combined wanna, with that I have said before that I usually would be saying right now, but that this is not what we're talking. We're talking over and about a commentary. Conclusion. Get ready to watch Captain Logan collapse in a fit of PTSD. Yeah, let's watch. He's gonna have to wear this tremendous fat suit that's hot and sweaty and go to break out and get all ugly for a while. And he, can all he performs in the movie, he's actually squatting. They're, and they're talking about a um, take, like, a Zama right now and how hard it was to be in that suit. Out. It looks and really he's and, we and, and he was so committed to it, it's really kind of sad, you know, like the way this movie's remembered and stuff. Because his performance honestly is amazing. Oh no, it's great. It is brilliant. Like was I don't like a lot of what they I don't like some of what they have him do, but like there was, there was Todd, Todd goes on. That guy on is one of the most committed actors. He'll do anything. It's important to have another white person as a, because there's, there's he, that. He had to literally squat. They talk about this here. He had to literally squat down in that thing. Um, and we walk around like we, this. You know, we didn't have a lot of money to cast the movie. And we didn't he have a lot of money, Tiger. period, to cast was, anybody was, except the stars. Or the leads. Let's just call them the leads. I bet you didn't know that Spawn, Black Tiger, and D.B. Sweeney is not the lead in the movie. But D.B. Sweeney is always colors. Red Spawn, Black Dynamite, and Bronze Tiger. But I will remind Clint, we, we actually read with a lot By of their blocks, powers combined. It wasn't only... They make the Michael J. White. Cast. Todd yep. McFarlane. I the love Michael J. White. more interesting no, he's great. to me I love is not he's also, uh, he's also whatever, Jax but in the, uh, love, the Mortal good, Kombat evil, web series. Friendship, betrayal, yeah, war, I've heard that. peace. Mm -hmm. Every one of those words and, uh, and every culture uh, and every uh, place you know who's on your blade is, don't you? Planet. I can give it's, uh, the seven translation nine. of those words. Jerry Ryan is in that? Yeah. Why, am I, why are we watching that right now? About a cultural thing. I don't want to see that. I love Jerry Ryan. About Harlem. That didn't translate. 
You know, if you do something about, you know, the, the, the breadbasket yeah. America, some of that won't translate to Israel and vice versa. You can't you can't take different cultural differences and, and do it. But if you say love, love has a meaning, it's a universal word. And so to me what's Everybody more important, you know, it's like are, math the, and the music. I'm not surprised that Todd's that Todd's not a Star Wars fan. Because the entire loves. idea He's behind George Lucas making Star Wars was power, so what's the word responsibility You can make something that is culturally like unfamiliar and, and you'll just get used to it you'll pick up on it yeah a more universal thing todd just said that's a bad idea and he's saying you should just make things about love and he's using the word universal mm -hmm. the 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 villain the femme fatale priest now it's interesting totally priest was a composite character that really created for oh yeah it comes from the and again why it's because it was all she's macho pretty. guys the whole world is men we wanted yeah, to add another she's angle the, and in the she's comic book there's a lot of tough chicks but we couldn't fit them all in the story i wanted to have angela in there and there's We'll get to that later, but we couldn't yeah, fit her got all in. So we game, made yeah. this female composite character pretty and I creative wish for that, which they had created this sort of difference again. Which, in this? But which yeah, actually because it's shortly like after this, they're not allowed to use her anymore. Yeah. So it all in the comics, sense, and this is something we actually did the same way. To yeah. The development of the movie. The Todd was yeah, and that third season is supposed to be all about the celestial mythology and stuff. Yeah, she's nowhere to be seen. In and of itself. But the angel they have is awesome. Yeah, she is fascinating. Yeah. As it goes through the series. Or at least I remember her being fascinated. I can't explain to you why right now. We've talked about the commentaries for the some of the Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like four episodes of the series. Six. Let's say eight. Yeah, we'll now, just originally in the to. script, uh, she does get killed off where she gets killed off. It's not a fun bad either. Going to be brought back. Season two? No, it's just a slog. Or it's boring. Time and money. So the original the idea was she was going to be revived cybernetically like, no, from this kind I mean, of... I mean, I mean, it's not even for that material. There's stuff that there. It's about things. We were going to actually bring her back as a warrior in hell. And that, you know, when I finished that, it's one year, I wanted to cry. I needed the, three more seasons of that. Why I if think this goes over well, we can just do the commentaries for those. Because like it's all sides. Okay, it's nuts, happen. yeah. You can't just let her go. She was great. And that was just due to uh, the limitations we had. We couldn't bring her back. If anybody hates this and thinks it's totally pointless, though, to feel free to write that down in the comments. In oh, yeah. In the movie, you'll Tell see us this uh, is awful. Al Simmons, you know, do things that we would never see Bruce Wayne do or Peter Parker do. Oh, right. He kills people and assassinates mm -hmm. people in the airport scene. You never see Batman people kill people. No. Nope. Installation. We didn't see uh, that. But what we're trying just to do a decade before this. Yep. All all, and even worse in return. He comes from this elite yeah. fighting force yep, you that never ultimately see that. trains him to be a killer. It's also one of the reasons why he was picked by Hell in the first place. What were the Michael, other reasons? Michael, Michael J. White, White really, really this is scene here that where, uh, character right off the Al date. Simmons breaks mm -hmm. the uh, I mean, North Korean guard's neck, about the casting in this. and uh, that scene is not in the uh, the PG thirteen version. He doesn't get to really act in this movie. A violent movie. scene, I would agree with I mean, like, that. I mean, and let's face it, every single like game on the PlayStation has neck breaks. For star in this a little bit. You know, so why is that's it? That's the Mark? material. It's not why white. Is it that, that they, no, that, I really you know, think he could have been a bigger actor in the nineties. I think so too. Movies are so public. Well, I think he could have been a bigger actor in the nineties because I think if this movie had been again, you can't compare. You know, well, except it could have been a rated R. You know, in first place. Rated movie would be. Uh, uh, you know, Spawn, Spawn movie? Uh, I, I think it could have jump started a, a career for him. If he makes a slightly different career choice than he does play it. But as time's expanding, I, I, I think he's an actor and everyone knows at this point. I don't think he's unhappy with where his career is going. Audience is going to no, grow no. In a very diverse way. Because he's, he's found work. He's a character actor. Yeah. That the movie be PG 13. For obvious reasons, but I think you want and to do it. I think all actors want in to do essence agreed, and, and in the end, I did too. I will somewhat agree with what you just said of that it had to be PG thirteen for obvious 17. reasons. And we're like, talking R, it was so popular above. right 16, then. 16, 15, mm. 14, and thirteen year olds who are yeah, avid that, readers. That's what I'm saying. Response. It was going to really hurt really it agreed. if those kids so couldn't go see it. So from the get go, then after our first version of the story, we had to essentially make it PG thirteen, which required a lot of effort. As dumb as it was, people analyzing it to make sure it was PG thirteen. And then when I shot the film, even though we had $40 million, to shoot this movie was million. really difficult. Well, and, yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's dumb is not the right word. It's in, as incoherent as it is. But then, less so than the material they adapted it from. Had to be eliminated from the PG-13 movie. Every single Good job, instance. Miguel Roy. Well, I've never seen now, a picture a of Al McGill, right? I don't think he's a fake fire. person. Excuse me, Al Simmons gets set on fire. He's a good example. Pretty sure he we wasn't. No, I'm kidding. I have seen a picture of him. In terms of the amount of explosions, how much fire you I'm can actually see on his body. I'm confused where that stocking thing on his head, but... I'm confused where that stocking thing on his head, but... I'm confused where that stocking thing on his head, but... I'm confused where that stocking thing on his head, but... I'm confused where that stocking thing on his head,
This is an example where my DC Jason Wynn does it because Jason Wynn looks like a character from the comics attack. that somebody recognizes. Because we, again, on this movie, we tried to shoot a tremendous amount of footage in a short amount of time. Later, and the explosion was they really done it after this, after this movie and make it next that. door well, to but the that was always the intent. That was always Todd's plan. Yeah. Old oil refinery, or I don't know exactly. Yeah, he's not channeling the people that are in the commentary that we're listening to. I think they brag about her being in the comics in this commentary. We'll get there. Do they really? I mean, I mean, I mean, they were bragging earlier about how look, we put in the movies that we tried to strong female characters in the in the comics. We put one in this shots in the sets. Um, so naturally, you, you want to have some. And that's the way I would describe her, really. But we couldn't really. I mean, she's a psychopathic, strong female like Aaron, but, you know, Strong in the sense that she can. We got to the point where we actually pick up a big gun. While we're running out of people to uh, dress up as clown, because we want to show a clown where he actually claps his hands, and um, f frightens the pigeons away. So we dressed up uh, the chief modeler. Yeah. All right. This is this is all the set here. This is all the he, he set. He doesn't explain that. Okay. And we have the this slingshot is a good coming set. up, and we, we didn't have anybody that would fit this the This is real suit, for Crow, so we yeah. Look, a digital, there's the Theater, right? Using a Sony digital camera, just a small insert of Spawn walking down this sort of uh, I want Spawn's world set. to be that small. Um, this is what you'd want. Staircase. You have an it's alleyway where you live. Yeah, the, yeah. Trailer. I want to and apologize. This is what Spawn here was supposed to look This is what the alleyway set was supposed to look like. This guy named Huck, or a.k.a. Scott Wurtz. But all I had was Eric's future bedroom. This whole shot of CG except for Spawn walking Who put a spiral staircase in an alleyway? Who puts gum on a roof? This is the alley set here. There are actually, just so people understand, there are two right, major there, sets this looks we like used. One is the rooftop oh, yeah, no, 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 set, no, no, no. and one is the alley set. And the crow's way we more influential film. We were so limited in stage people. space. That's gotta be. They were so many the, going the back on. We could the not yeah. get high enough space. I, I think there's some of the crow in the matrix. We built the sets right up to the roof. He says that shot that we just saw before this was entirely CG. We had to remove the ceiling in some of these shots. It was a very painful process to shoot. I mean, that's the thing that's easy to forget is that some of the best people in special effects did work on this. I, mean, I always forget about that Aliens and T2. Like, that's Again, Spawn nuts. coming in the alley, we couldn't introduce yeah. all the characters in the comic book. We're missing, like, Garib and the other This is only and four years after the we first issue. We didn't have the time or the room to introduce them all. Right? This is what? Nine, four or five years after the first issue. a kid, again, to find yeah. a way yeah. to bring out this is what, 97. Yeah. kindness. I mean, Spawn's again, I'm a little, a little bit torn about 92. how successful that is, honestly. But again, it's part of the I like idea how he names of a bunch of bums, like... Bringing you know, Spawn's all those memorable characters. To the front. Having a, like, he names bums that are like not in the movie. They couldn't fit Vietnam those characters in. To find a way to make um, it more there is, in terms there of that. Yeah, Bobby is a big deal, though. He said Garrick. Out. That was the idea of bringing Zack in. And oh, again, he yeah. was a new character at the time. It's been too long. I don't even remember now. Story. And the idea here is that the alley where Spawn is reborn is the DMZ between heaven and hell. Earth is caught in the battle between good and evil. Earth is this land in which bodies why and souls are born to be harvested for the armies of the two great forces. The DMZ, like what is it about the, the alley? The alley is the, the castaway place. The alley is this where the door to heaven and hell can exist because this is where the the lost people, the disenfranchised, the people like, who have seen everything, the ones who can mumble about the devil it, they've seen, the like, ones like, who have seen the child murder. That's build, it's erect everything is there. You ever thought about this? Did we That's conveniently, conveniently erect there. buildings it's also the just the wide enough apart that it creates this space what in, in the DMZ? What happens the when there's like a... Demolition Spawn or, or a project to like fix this part of town? Like what happens when Luke Cage happens? Yeah! ...for us done by digital arts, which we wanted to sort of give yeah, a sense the real of Hell's Kitchen happens. the layout yeah. of the city. We have the decrepit, yeah, exactly. gothic, tenderloin, castaway area that's embedded in this huge metropolis. Have you ever heard anybody tenderloin, gothic, and tenderloin together? That, that, that's good. And that's where nice work choice, Bell. Fitzgerald and Wanda now live. It was done by Bruce does. Walters at uh, Exo Digital Arts. He literally just care. took I love that he just pulled that out. Todd had drawn the cities with all his weird buildings we two with those strange with spires. Yeah, what's and, everyone uh, else's implant? And scan them on a, col on a color scanner. They brought that and, with them. And they were like, can we, can we use this? Macintosh, and then composed oh, them yeah, that thing's crazy. with a plate of Los Angeles that we, uh, a photographic plate that we photographed. <laughs> a plate of Los Angeles. We brought a plate of Los Angeles. That looks like my one. To, to, to create <laughs> our... Um, our skyline, our spawn skyline. We wanted to create are we, a metropolis. Are we supposed to be like, oh we my god, an intersection does not look like a cross! Mind blown! And also the other idea... See, conspiracies everywhere! Gothic decay are these kind of 
suburban enclaves where the good happy people live in obliv the oblivious good, happy to, this, to this strange connection to heaven and hell. So the beginning of the movie was consciously the human side. The real issue was oh, is how that much what time we had to stay human before we got to the fantasy world. It's really nice to explain all this to me. Also, short, we opened with a five-minute montage of, of Hellfire and, which and, and, and Clown and Spawn Face. And and you know with the humanity. You opened immediately with... Flashbacks later. And again, part of the reason the scenes weren't working as well as the I thought. The cosmic stuff. But also, yeah. we were spending too much time before we got to Spawn. Because this was, again, a big discussion. How much do we tell in flashback versus how much do we tell in a linear story? And the decision was made, yeah, that's and I agree with that after a lot Suicide of Squad? trying it out. It, it, it is tough with this material to decide, though. And then that's that's always a thing that, that's, that's hard to figure out when you're dealing with an amnesia plot. Yeah. But amnesia is usually a crutch and not actually Here when Spawn is on the ground, you're trying to tell. He's so, in such pain know. besides psychological distress from seeing his best friend. One of the nice about the this material being loves, chunky but he's is also that transforming he's not allowed to spend forever randomly remembering things when we decide and when, now uh, we want to throw the audience a tiny bit more of the bone. Is, ah, well, I mean, kids, I got more you wouldn't think this makes better for a better film than it does an ongoing narrative. When you read the ongoing narrative, it does. Just well, because of the way right it was, it was back, put together, because it never ends. The dog basically and it ought to. to his master yeah. even after five Or at least years. the origin the ought to. It's the only time in the entire movie that you you know? get a smile. Wait, it's still on origin. In this entire movie, yeah. he's well, over 250 issues in, it's still origin. Characters. But again, it actually is, is a fairly that I'm not reading anymore. For somebody like me that lives with the character. Well, that was when the real story happened. I, I always, I always, uh, I always wanted to have a dog named Spaz to sort of, you know, kick around. So, <laughs> I, th I think now we're going to see lots of dogs named Spaz across the country. So I hope. Oh so. yeah, I'm sure there's all, all kinds of. Spaz? We'll look that. We'll look at it. Name Mark. <laughs> have you noticed that we haven't heard that much McFarlane yet? <laughs> oh come no, on. I, I have noticed. Spaz that. Was named after. You wait, McFarlane, because I know that's the stuff we can riff on real, real well. Having a quality about. We can riff on that real good. Yeah. When Clown we gives good, the doll to the little girl, originally he goes, and for lovely Lolita here, we had to change that to, and a lovely lady. Now, I was a little bit, I couldn't quite get that because Lolita is a literary term from where I come from. Anyway, that was there was a lot of strange censorship. I don't know what that even means. Oh, you know what Lolita means? Mm -hmm. uh, Lolita is uh, the idea a of the novel green energy about... Is that, that is uh, that is the energy and life. Force I, I'm not sure exactly what the novel's ingredient. about, but That's something to do with a romance between a grown adult and a and a little girl. Oh, okay. If I had thought that was too person scary. to take care of my yeah, wife, and uh, that you would pick your best friend. Uh, and then somewhere in the 2000s, it be becomes the term like lonely, and, and it's uh, it's anime that, thing. It's anime that, that have he like he wasn't able to ever give her a child. Twelve year old girls as their leads, but are dressed kind of scantily. It's his child. It's not. In the comic book, I state empirically that like that he was basically impotent. And they couldn't have children, and they didn't Does know he why. That but when he comes back and he sees that she has a child, he now knows well, that at they, least it was him. Of course, him. it's Redcon because it then him. there's and a it's just another miscarriage one of those tricks that, that he caused. That presents to him. Oh yeah. Him. Besides, I'm taking your identity away from you. I'm also See, the funny thing about Spawn is I can, I, is I can forget you. certain things, and, you know, has, and I can remember other myself. things. I don't have to you know, remember we, we get very and forget all of it at once. That's why if you jump in randomly, you just assume well. everything before it that makes it sense. Made sense. Yeah. Yep, that's why I did mine. I, mean, I think on. that's a classic cartoon style, Warner Brother cartoon style It's trying to take it as a piece. Why am I going through all this again? Actually, it's like... Really, that Spot. type of gag that came from Mass really you. stems from a lot of Tex Avery and Bob Clampett's jokes. <laughs> very extreme, Both right? of them used to work like Mars, but, you know, I've never liked that. Sell this gross stuff. Yeah, I don't. All these types I, of yeah. uh, extreme facial. It's all a clown dance. Uh, it's all about the violence. No, it is. Farting is he about? Is a normal oh yeah, that it does. It does that. Yeah, they do that stuff. But. When but it's not as gross here, on the page in a way that it, um, in the way that it is actually, in live action. He actually was yeah. going to show his nasty underwear. I, one of my I don't feel like it. How is that why, not crossing a line? But well, we had to actually treat the underwear. That feels so like that's so you crossed a PG thirteen line. In the PG thirteen version, the, the word up, we had to cut immediately. Is. We could not see. Well, he just said that that's the Raider. That's the Raider thing. They, they cut. Remains. They cut some of that. In the um, that's oh, okay. Of, uh, the MPA's concern for our youth. I'm not actually listening. Did, you, did you talk? Did you talk about the donut? I just wanted to trick you into letting me do a sponsor. I don't know what the point of this was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you weren't going to trick me into doing what, this donut? again. <laughs> donut. Well, There's got to be an extra donut. thing to it. Squish the donut and some white white. Well, no, no. We'll just watch the movie, but this time we'll do it in full costume. Is that something that's really inappropriate for a 13-year-old to see? I think every 13-year-old does that. I mean, what are you talking about? They got stickers on their textbooks. 
look like that. When you're dealing with that, trying to that justify yeah. having a, to a cum joke linear. with so your donut. Oh, you just said that on our channel and too. Wow. Everything I've ever done is the most linear. It's that there is no, I know that, but like I just is, never thought of. You know, and you keep tricking me into things. There's a word that hopefully the first and the last time. I'm the Fisto the whole time. The ending, if you will. Uh, at the end of the movie, because we don't know. Wait, did you just print me and my wife up, and it's I won't remember that we were ever married, so or that we were ever married? Two, that two sense. or as you call it, a sequel. Oh, this so is lovely. It's really this the is first this time, is modern Renaissance art. Books, I don't do it. We actually, <laughs> have, we actually see the Said, deal. This is uh, uh, Roger Ebert. I mean, I remember at the time thinking this was amazing. Instead of being about subject matter that you know you go back to and redress maybe in a year or two. But we have to actually show yeah, the deal being made, Bolger which is, if you want to see your wife, mouth. then we need you to do this act for us. And he says yes, and that's it. That's what the is conversation. the act? Yes. You wonder, well, we'll leave the army, but eons from now in the comedy. Bang, everything else now changes when he returns, that he does get to see his wife, but what he didn't ask was... Twist? Was I gonna look like the same man when I when I died? The answer is no. Am I gonna be in a Forgot to ask. No. I Am never I have thought to, about asking. All those things that are now given to him, and his whole world's now been turned upside right down. Right now, I'm a total charred corpse. Nothing is the same um, except there's your wife. Am I gonna not be a totally wife, charred, is, you charred corpse? Eyeball, when I come back. Take a look at her, and and given that that the devil is a trickster. That spawn ultimately. Al Simmons never never read the fine print, if you will, on the contract for his soul. And so he, he, like, the devil basically feels he delivered his part. But and now it spawns wouldn't turn you to think, basically come back Todd, and do his part, which wouldn't you think the general in training. That it would be better to give the person that you want to lead your army what they want so that they would be more willing to lead your army. That gives you a motivation. You know? And of course, there's the whole thing where, like, you have to go willingly and all of that. And then, well, it's easier if. Yeah. Yeah, if I, I may call like, you Todd, of course, I feel like, one of our nice little bits I feel like enough of that is still going to suck. Life because yeah, people don't realize still that hell. Jimmy Stewart was a Satanist, and that's something that comes up a lot in conversation. Hollywood. You're still admitting how much of a horrible person you are. You know, you know, like that's the thing that I remember from this comic that they say that Jimmy Stewart was a Satanist. I don't know if that's true. Sure. That's why we never that's why we put that little reference in there. That's why they put that reference. Now look, he is a nice guy. All right. It wasn't them, something John Lake hey, Zama just said on, nice on, on the day because <laughs> I, he's clearly improv. From my point of view, the reason why Sloan was yeah. appropriate for me is when I saw the he comic book being run as a hero. I think yeah. it's graphic. I wanted to say and I love loving husband? Question mark. Decay and strange organically. <laughs> Remember, a lot of that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it has things like child murderers and and racist crimes and. And that would look amazing in a cartoon. Like you could do something people. really cool with but that. At the same image. time, it's embedded in with this the mythological with like a face coming out of the the thing. The shovel, so yeah, the shovel, yeah. Todd definitely did from sources well, it's actually, like uh, a lot of people aren't actually uh, looking at this with this probably. Yeah, remember we're commentary, we're commentary, on a com commenting on a commentary. Like maybe, maybe that's what we're doing. It's very apropos for me because I'm a filmmaker who wants to make fantastic films. Yeah, I mean not just science fiction. Filmmakers that really inspired me as an example, which kind of throws people. When I first left home, and I'm from Alaska, uh, the land of fishing and hunting, and uh, I saw a film called El Topo by Gideon Hodorowsky, and that actually wow. was a very influential film in my development. That's a deep as a pull. Filmmaker. Like Hodorowsky I mean is like an obscurist film. filmmaker. I've never heard of that. The whole well, how do you know? Of how um, I know it because uh, he almost made Dune, the, and that he is the Hodorowsky of Hodorowsky's Dune. Earth completes his he also has done a bunch of uh, a science fiction film, comics with Mobius. I always wanted to read. I chose to do that. Is the idea of the suit of armor being a I keep living almost creature, reviewing that creature that so covers you know what? his body and is If Yodorowsky's an influence, this film may be deeper and more meaningful than you're giving it it's credit in a comic book, for. Because he, he's farther. a surrealist. So one of the idea of this Maybe this, this film this does make sense if you take virus virus yourself out of your literal mind. His necro, yeah, but the part you're uh, forgetting body is which how much stuff in the, in the third act Earth gets all hobbled together in the editing room. That is growing and mutating. It's not intended in, fact, the in the first says, place. Well, you're in your larval stage. Just wait a second, buddy, and you'll be com you're, you'll finish. Or was it always your growth. intended? And that happens. Not according to these guys, when you get to the end, the microplasm reserve. completes its. No, I don't actually think that this is an attempt to be a surreal film, but it's really interesting. 
So Maybe that was the idea there, is like to make something that makes the notion of a living creature, as and a symbiotic organism, more even stronger in the film. And actually, I think that the transformation sequence in the graveyard. Is I'm learning. This was a long shot to do. Actually, it took us about four months to five months to get a complete. We first of all shot a Vista Vision plate, and um, one this of the problems is that. Terrible. It's right. a shirt it's hanging cool. down uh, off of the burnt Simmons. So we, we essentially have to remove things that are there. And when we remove something, we have and to have I've something always put loved behind the, it. So in a lot of cases, we didn't. So it's a great looking mask. We had to yeah. do some kind of rough match move, uh, what we say, in order to try and mimic the move in computer graphics. First thing we had to do was build never understood. Uh, spawn in different layers in Why? computer graphics. And the in choice Super we made is we, we, we had so a bit of a debate at the yeah. very beginning of the project of trying to figure but out he's caked Mark in did want this Why can't we just have a spawn living, mask? Uh, armor to what go on, although like he's, he didn't really he almost have almost never has the spawn though. mask on. So and the excuse of, well, the actor um, as, wants as to be seen doesn't work because he's caked in makeup. And make it look like armor, and at the same time make it look like he's living. So we divided up everything into about four or five different sections. Yeah. And, I guess you're um, right. Ma as I said, match. I mean, you can do a lot of, of you know, voiceover Simmons, dialogue, I guess. Uh, with but the to keep in mind uh, that armor, in the comics, he doesn't wear it all that much uh, either. We'll have things rip out of his back, and we'll I mean, have a lot of green. He does in fights. Like welding torch. But if he's and, talking to somebody, it's off. Animation. I mean, much, much. Yeah, I guess of you're right, especially. The and he goes on and off between panels. That would be sort of sealing everything, like it it was welding together two pieces of metal. Other things I tried to do was like flash lightning in the face of uh, the lens all the time to give it the impression that things were very hot. Finally, oh, and last also thing, keep in mind uh, that that mask to bring on the actual face. There's more visual itself, effects going on with that again, mask, so it's probably more expensive. Every time you build everything in a system called yeah. potentially depending on how they're doing the, the, the eyes and stuff. But then um, I think some of that is just practical light. Back to B-spline. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay, so but maybe they maybe they also just want to show off the prosthetics. So he's talking about how hard you worked on this and and how and how good he thinks it looks and all of that. Yeah, you're one of the the top special effects guys. Yeah, we wanted to make just industry. again keep a visual, right. a strong visual. Why are you power? even on the commentary for this movie? All the Aren't you ashamed kind of, of how it eventually strange. turned out? Like why do you want to talk about this movie? Teleportation but this wasn't space, uh, and some well of the transitions the are simply stylized ways of moving between. Is this before it comes out, or shortly places. thereafter? Again, so we're not even sure it wasn't on a again, laser disc. Yeah, but even even then, of, uh, they did Thomas this Thomas. real quick. I hate hey, Pizza Hut, are you and watching? Was, I want to get that maggot pizza going. The, the, the maggot pizza. pizza Hutter, right? No, no, I know. But I but I'm saying it was. People just ate them like crazy. But I mean, it did it did perform okay. There are wax worms that are a lot bigger. Than maggots, but when yeah, ten years when later, we probably not. But I don't understand what point you're making right now. Right you're a special effects guy. This does right. look good, and he's proud and of his camera. It, it, it does at the time. I yelled, "Cut! He's spitting and hacking." Yeah, and I guess some of it does. I, I, I don't know. John, when he went for it, he was very concerned. I'm not saying okay, everything. Did you get it perfect? And of course, I mean, there were some things I questioned. were. I mean, the hell stuff. Fast, I've done it perfectly. Yeah, but that wasn't one of the things I questioned at the time. Really, I don't know. Um, so you actually devoured those yeah, no, flies. And the no, worst part, the there, for, part for the time, especially the, uh, animal person the costume stuff, came up to me and, and Violator and the this cape. All very quickly, we're all in a rush. The cape's amazing. amazing. You'll never hear me Mark, uh, say a bad word about John the cape. didn't really bite those worms. And I'm going, what are you talking about? He didn't just kill those caterpillars. She got upset because he, he maimed and, and destroyed and injured those sweet little bugs. Are there any normal people that these, these bugs. Or is everyone just... Were harmed in the making of this picture. That sounds like a story that didn't really happen. But I said, what do you do with the rest of the ones okay. that didn't use? Throw them away. I'm going because I think he's. I, I feel like you jumped to that kind of thing a lot. We're like, I don't think that happened. Because you say that all the time. He says it like. I like, would never this, even. This I would never even think to question a thing like prison. that. Because the, uh, he says it the like. Famous prison in uh, Los I don't Angeles. Know. That, uh, I mean, sometimes you can really tell what somebody's just constantly BSing. The, uh, the county. Well, and then like stood he, vacant for, uh, I think he said that she was like from like PETA, but I think it is now, uh, or something like like he, like, she was, like she was like I didn't hear that an animal person. Yeah. And I, 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 why would oh, you have them on set if you're going to? How do you address the accusations? If you're going to, you're going to uh, kill the animals and then like be like, it wasn't it ridiculous that this person that was here for the animals was. Yeah, wow, like that green screen is rough. So here we have, this you is in the future back. now. Wynn has made it to the I could. I have done worse than that in the past, but I, I also could do better than that. Rasko does better than that. He hasn't put anything on his screen. He, he puts nothing on his green screen. 
Boy, she looks we can always see his green screen. This is our kind of this is kind of our homage to uh, Albert Speer's fascistic wonder architecture. Golden eagles, black leather. You know the Nazis do a lot about leather. You have that outfit now, don't you, Mark? <laughs> One of them. The best is yet to come. Look at my special mini disc. And uh, here's Martin I like putting that, a CD ROM into her, his uh, her like sexy leather his, uh, outfit drive is the and, uh, displaying around uh, the office uh, outfit. It's uh, not the imagery, super uh, mission uh, outfit. Visually up on the screen, and in fact, when it's Martin casual Friday in leather outfit, yeah, the yeah. sink of when the uh, explosions are occurring uh, in terms of uh, heat 16 are are, are occurring uh, uh, in the uh, representation of the world. Um, the sink was 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 off with respect to Martin Sheen walking in front of the frame. So Band from the Ranch Entertainment went back in and rotoscoped every individual frame of Martin Sheen so they could create a holdout mat so that they could replace the sink of the timing of the visual display behind them. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. That, wow. Oof. Rotoscope. Wow. So here in this scene, this is this is one of the, our first energetic uh, music cues when Spawn's breaking in. And again, we searched very hard to get a piece of our uh, soundtrack to work, and we couldn't find one that fit for this for this spot. So we had to have the uh, composer Graham Rebell, who, who I was a fan of his music years and years ago, the music uh, to sort movie? of compose a piece just for this. Well, well, I mean, Graham Rebell to... too. I mean, as the composer, he was really the right guy. I mean, the guy who did the Crow. He worked for uh, played oh. with his band, which is his band, SBK. But which is sort of an, an industrial, intense. Uh, but they're, they're not. Uh, they're not. Because at first I was thinking. Uh, uh, that, well, yeah, you might do that if you're in, mostly in using in, in Australia pre-existing music, in the but they're UK. not doing that in this movie. And, no. uh, uh, Graham, uh, I don't the, understand uh, what that means. And also, Graham spent a lot of time in England and had a real connection. Was the unless that was a scene they added techno rock scene. But they, he doesn't uh, and was say able that. to sort of and you know incorporate his music, music just add. And, and he actually and, and, yeah and, and synergistically sort of combine actually, that a little bit. We should with, understand uh, what he's saying. Like oh yes, yeah, of I mean, course. We compose music. We have we to compose new music for so the scene because nothing uh, that you see the he whole had movie, written you don't feel like things are, are jumping there. out that they don't. Did he just write a bunch of random music and wasn't actually scoring the film? Is it because it's a thirty-second shot and they were like, oh no, we forgot to have you score this thirty-second shot? Yeah, maybe they didn't think they needed music there initially. I don't know. Oh, here comes. It was kind of a play, That's true. W, uh, W-Y-N-N, and, and, and it was just because the sky is all about power. Oh, is that what it's win. about? Mm. So it was, it was well, it's just, kind of a you know, play on the words. Thanks oh! For, uh, thanks for explaining the, sky the whole movie to me. To top me is kind of a bit of a stereotype of some of the people that, I, that I've met, which is that no, all they not. want is kind of fame and fortune and power. It's just people you've met. to control things. We have a tendency this, this to do stories about people like Jason. One-dimensional, totally evil guy for no reason. He's the head of the CIA. He's met somebody else. people. Him, isn't yeah. he powerful? And isn't he prestigious and a dignitary? But you end up, you know, going he knows a lot up of a few more pages and find out front, that he's been remarried three times. That his kids are estranged from him. That he's a bit of an alcoholic. Maybe he's I'll even, great you know, cuffed one of the wives. Any of that was in time. the movie. And that doesn't seem to come in and factor into the whole equation. And so I, I just find it odd that, that, that we as a society here just determine what's, what's good and bad by the number of dollars that go in our pocket or how no, we high don't. we climb the corporate We're ladder. constantly talking about how terrible rich this people is not are. Spawn Even in the 1990s, real to everyone for real. look at any movie. It's always like the rich billionaire. Place where it's always the evil guy with so much money in it. Yeah, he's exactly like a lot of the cliche stuff he's doing is the first time anybody's done ball. it. That's the setting here. And we wanted... Uh, to sort of set up the fact that Jason Wynn now, is And I always try to give McFarlane as much credit as he's due. The problem is, people have he doesn't agenda, give himself credit for the places. stuff that really was kind of original. To, to, to well, and he always seems like he's overcompensating because he knows he's not a story him. guy. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the thing that always really frustrates me about him, is that I wish he would just relax and come out and talk about it the way it is. I'm not a story guy. I'm not a reader. And here's what's interesting to me. Not something Hope like it's Batman, interesting for others. Do like my best. And to be fair, in letters pages, sometimes he will come out and be like, like had had I mess up a lot. And and energy. I'm true. Yep, there she is. As a, as a sort of repelling of course, system. For me, the cape not is a character who, that's, in That's not what she would look like it's if she was a character alive, in It's always moving. It's always ready to pounce like a panther. It's ready to protect Spawn. It's ready to disguise him. It's always 
in motion. Well, it never but, hangs limply around you know, his back. He likes back dogging on, like on, on Marvel Vader DC. State, for he really likes Always dogging on Marvel DC. Specifically when Batman and Spider-Man. When its character is not necessary to be there, why wouldn't the that be your go-to? He's like, because so it's McFarlane, like just say all superheroes. You're wrong. So but just say all superheroes uh, are rich billionaires. Choice, and wasn't it interesting that I flipped that book, and I made Bruce Wayne the bad guy? Extending, at least Why does he say that? I mean, he'd be uh, he'd be wrong in the way he's oh, always wrong, but, but at least it sounds more like he had not and shut my hero in an alleyway. Yeah. Yeah, so could have I made mine up uh, like made a homeless man. Suspended from wires being puppeteered, but you could say something with that, I mean, or you could pretend that you were saying something with that. living beast that didn't who work at all. used to be so controlled very early by that the, the cape had evil, to be done rich with computer people. Animation. Yeah, that means it's expensive. That means I can't do it all. No, that means Tyler Fox is the only guy that knows that rich people aren't exactly the best people. part of the reason that the whole idea of the cape retracting and extending as needed occurred. Five years ago, we couldn't have really great. done this shot, so we used a technique. Or, the cape, uh, the cape's uh, great. She heard say five years ago, which allows us you to set up the sort of We're invisible talking about this, set of the year they made it. fields okay. around a bee spine patch, and uh, within those turbulence fields, you can sort of determine the weight of the cape, uh, how fast the fans are blowing, and um, all from a source. I mean, it's so the most it sort of obvious it entrance, but it looks so good. Uh, yeah, we drop it from the skylight. Flag can always drop through the skylight. We're used to doing yeah, a lot of very, let's say, grand or risky or complicated camera work. And Batman Forever, forever and I mean, like... Part of the game. Well, I mean, but I assume if Batman Forever is an intentional nod, they... I didn't want to limit the Maybe it's just a superhero thing. Yeah, I think it's just a superhero thing. I would use whatever camera system was available to get the best shot. And knowing the the power of the digital production. Tools. Even if it was a so handheld camera from 1962, if it got the best shot, the I used that camera. You can't sure. Much, basically, without unless you have more time. I think also we're. One one thing I feel that having done this a lot, every shot really with a different, with had, every very, single very camera that's ever been been made, what can to work, see what if it, if it was the best camera do. for the job. So a lot of the effects camera work on the movie, uh, it, it put a lot of pressure on me, and, and but in other words, it was very free. I would just I'm, go I'm having such a hard time not and, just saying things I've said a hundred times. We shot them, I would say, why is Terry Fitzgerald the white guy? Scenario I'm accustomed to. They talked about that at the beginning. Um, oh, they did. But it yeah, they oh, yeah, I remember they did. We, I, we talked over probably. I mean, well, and then, well, because they, they bring it up where they're like, I forget why, why they say they the do it. Rigs are using um, always, like, but then somebody like corrects, and one of the other guys corrects, and, and goes, well, we didn't just about big shots look at, with look at white guys, we looked at everybody. Moving through buildings and stuff, and you have to have collapsible so, um, actually, um, the explanation is. set pieces and all this kind of stuff. And it was something that we're very familiar with and we're able to work quickly with. But it's, no matter what, it's always complicated. Thing is Simmons. I want you to nail it now. Uh, here we have uh, Priest in all of our latex and leather glory. I was very uh, uh, influenced by certain animation styles, particularly uh, you, you manga gotta and anime, give them... things like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, or uh, yeah, you can or, uh, see the Ghost in the Shell, American version mm -hmm. by. Uh, uh, a you kind of got to give them. But you would immediately look at Spawn and know what else it was. Peter the, Chung. Peter Chung. Oh, I think they're talking about Aeon Flux. Uh, yeah. I can also see the Aeon Flux in it. Mm -hmm. The uh, Spawn Crotch Skull Grabber was, in my mind, a classical male defense mechanism. Um, <laughs> I think we all needed one of those at certain points in our lives. So, really? Some of us need more of them. It doesn't come up that day. often in my I life. I get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to divulge how many times I've been kicked in the crotch. So I'm here's not gonna another example that. where we, uh, where we uh, had to have, we were censored here. I and probably Spawn count on one hand. Priest in the PG-13 movie, we had to play as one continuous <laughs> shot, just like on TV. Whereas in the uh, original version of the movie, we I also can count multiple without figures. Don't need my fingers, my fingers to count things. things. Now again, originally I had intended to bring Priest back into the movie after this is she's killed here by Spawn. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted her to come back as a she Spawn. Lady spawn. I wish we we'd done that so bad. The money to accomplish that, we came so close, and I still is that sad? Bummed by, uh, yeah. by it occasionally, but we just weren't able to do that. Here's another example. But if PG that's what you were gonna do, in this version, you'll don't see guards have, who get shot. Don't in the American make it look like version, a setup for something no like they do. This is such a first act bad. thing. Like it feels like we're we're just into our first plot point, right? We, and that that's part of that. Yeah, no, no. It, it feels like like she needs to be throughout the movie then and killed someplace else, probably, right? You need to completely rewrite the movie. Yeah, because why is it? That makes it seem like we're there, and we didn't realize that until the third act. Then we cobbled that together. Set. Well, it's weird because like angry. I want to ask these guys. Oh, he he gets his, his Lamp, revenge John on the Lee, person who directly you killed him. Except they were both just standing there. there. You kind of don't even need her. That's that's where the big problem I have with this is Jason Wynn doesn't need her. He drops the 
is cigarette penetration mm. and violence. Why does he need her? Well, she sprays the goop on him. I know. Yeah, he shouldn't be there. Yeah. Dude, look at I'm just kidding. I love what's going on. And that's even What about the Jerry Lewis thing? Like that guy's not his job. We're still talking about Jerry Lewis. You might be soon. The way you're going. I was going to say, uh, when, this, when the cape turns that into the wall, I think it's a turtle like thing. Because there's suction cups. Well executed cape it's goofy. Cup. Turning the yeah. cape into like it, a normal brick. I mean, the term has been used as morphing. Just be able to tear it's kind of a with general like term fingers. for yeah, technically yeah. what's going on. Um, it's like in Terminator, they called it and morphing. And that looked alright. I mean, that's pretty Spider-Man. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Um, Similar to this, we actually design very much like you do in the animation process. You design a first and last frame. So we design a first and last model. Right, and we know that by the last frame, or close to the last, like with with a second left, that it has to be this sort of a uh, hard, rigid structure to emulate what the wall looks like. So we're actually taking this fluid cape and shutting down the turbulence field by a certain frame range, so it becomes solid. And uh, well, the technical that's what stuff you're in there. So we, of course, also more interesting the, the story and thematic stuff. Color. Yeah, and of course, you don't want them to explain things to you, but thought process of, as I, as I always say, of. of what you were thinking when you put your story together. There's a fine line, but like that, that's interesting, you know, like... I think the cape shots are Like really where your inspirations came from the most for your character and thematic stuff, yeah, I mm -hmm. that I can get behind. Yeah. McFarlane just telling me what when his Spawn story's about, especially when it's not there. Away, that is really the thematic. He always says, anytime he talks about Spawn, regardless of what version of it Spawn it is. But I don't think these guys are getting too technical where they're like, this is how I made this invisible shot work and the wall and all that. That's not boring. That's an old digital like, shot too. That's the that one. It's where, kind of the big money uh, shot. Cross dissolve and despawn. And should have been the box. The edge, it's a CG. Yes, I've oh, always yeah. said. I've always got that. Shot, CG. Again, brooding. And they could have happened to him. I actually kind of got to give them how expensive that shot was, that it doesn't linger. They could have gotten away with that result of what that could have been ten seconds. Created. And it's like six people killed that he hadn't intended. Everything he has tried to do turns out wrong. It's a sort of complex aspect to his character, which is really. I mean, we all relate to that. Complex is a strong like, uh, word. Mm. People don't misunderstand. I mean, the too is also strong. Yeah. And the reason that shot is so important is because it's closest to what you see with the cape in the comic book. And I, we were all pushing for a shot like that. That's about. This is. That, that really this is, is kind always of in, to in my life Farland, like the big uh, turning points where it's one. time to start like also a shot looking at part of the, uh, doing wasn't something wasn't else and moving in a different direction. Whenever somebody puts a bunch of goop on me and sets me on fire, yeah, I tend to. That was one of the shots that Mike. Uh, he said, you know, you know, well, I mean, I mean, that's going really literal. We've all woken up from a coma so, and lost uh, years of our life, uh, right? Like, that's Kate, just a thing we've all gone and, uh, through. Mike said, do it. And uh, we got this is just a metaphorical and, version and, of that. Mm -hmm. never, right. Again, that was my greatest dream of the world. I don't know if I ever told you that. It's really one of the most beautiful shots in the movie. It's one of the I don't know. As I get older, I feel like my memory is going a little bit more, you know, you know, you know, at some point, I'm going to get to a to a place where I'm like, I mean, it was wait a minute, a chapel that must be the man who killed me. It was a big process of whittling down. It's all coming it's back! Uh, smoke coming around, clown, like right there. I like Can I play that up a little? You know, one of the parts I missed? Little, 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 more little, little, shots of clown's teeth. So over the top, I can never right. tell. I can never tell. He never brushed, did he? Um, here's some other examples <laughs> of why I ended up first to cover PG-13. Um, in in, a, in a, another one of John's literary references, This is not a bad color machine no. a syphilitic Balzac. <laughs> They, go ahead. They, they didn't yeah. go for it. I, mean, <laughs> I can't imagine what the fuck I'm talking about. Also, literary reference. It's another one of John's literary references. Anytime anybody says Balzac, it must be. Another, another example here is when a clown is walking away with the hookers. He goes, have you ever ridden a clown's pink pony? Personally, one of my favorite lines in the film. We had to change that. Have you ever been to a clown's pink playpen? Not nearly as satisfactory. Also, what, what, what was the line that you originally here, wanted for that? Like, yeah, why would you change that? Why would you change it to play pen? Something pink pony. Something even other than pink pony. Like that's. Pony, right? uh, I'm trying and what's weird is it was the basic same idea, but ten I was years pink after pony. this, I, I, no one has made you change any of those lines. Has a pink pony. No, 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 I wouldn't think. What toy companies have been talking to about that? Yeah. Well, even in a PG-13 movie, I think you're getting away with more of that. There's my little pony. And it comes in pink. After Michael Bay, with Transformers, oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> After that masturbation discussion in that first movie, what, what is that, that that's it, the sky is the limit. And the number of sick and, and it's not like this is meant to. It's not, it's not like this is a family film, even being PG thirteen. Yeah. 
This has more right I mean, to that yeah. kind of stuff yeah. than, than, than I mean, yeah, there's a freaking kid and a dog, we yeah. which I've also talked too much about. They haven't talked about the it yet. The thing about Michael no, that haven't. sold me is there's... Uh, Spawn is not a jovial guy. He doesn't tell a lot of jokes. Really? He doesn't stop to, like, you know... To smell the roses. He's not that kind that of guy. That has nothing to do with jokes. intensity and anger and power. You just said something you have heard a million times. You didn't power. think about how it fit in your and sentence. Again, reading he's not a jovial guy. He's not, great, he's not a jokey had, guy. Had a good he doesn't stop smelling the roses. One of these phrases is not like the other. That just brought... Yeah, that, that really, doesn't have anything to do... Yeah. I mean, literally. Unless you mean that you have to be thoughtful to be witty, but I don't think that's what he's saying. Well, yeah, well, and you don't have to be thoughtful and to really laugh. About yeah. How did he become Spawn in the movie? It's just so... Clown's not. Really yeah. For me. Another scene here which I felt very strongly about, this is based on a, a discussion I had with Steve Williams, Spaz, is again a nutty scene for Spawn. This is the cheerleading sequence. And I had a lot of resistance to this. Me too. And I had to really fight to keep it in the movie, and I'm very happy about it because it's just such a twisted, kind of sexually perverse, ridiculous, over-the-top idea. Which appealed to me. Greatly. Is it? Is it? Um, there's what is an sexually example perverse here about Malbolge in Hell, where Malbolge okay, so is not Okay, so you're pretending to be a cheerleader. I, like, that was an idea that was only partially successful. The they're acting the like so much of this is edgier was than it, than it was even then. Malbolge is yeah. using all the energy of Hell, and the whole environment is reacting to the dialogue, rather than just having a flapping jaw on this monster. Malbolge. We just really succeeded <laughs> all the way in achieving that, and that's why in that particular scene of Clown and Hell, it's a little bit strange. You see, Malbolge there's a difference between a flappy jaw and lines are coming, and not but they're not really matching up to what's happening. Originally, beca again, because of budgetary limitations, we were going to use a puppet, a miniature puppet, to represent Malbolge. That would have been better. There's, there's an inherent problem to try to make a large character who's supposed to be ten stories high speak at a certain speed. I mean, the jaws weigh two tons each, right? It's not Which about. It's if not about size. Is that large, he can't it's about the snout. Quickly, right? so yeah, this is the thing we still have a problem quickly. with. It has nothing to do with size. I don't think so either. Right, so there's you don't think about this when Ant Man talks and has a giant. I mean, I get that he's saying, like, it's how much weight that would have, but that's not how It doesn't actually. It's an animated character. Yeah. No, it's that it's a snout. Make it, you know, from, make from it like normal size, and then make everything here, around it relatively <laughs> smaller. <laughs> and no one's gonna be like, wait a minute, it wouldn't <laughs> speak like that. Its jaw weighs <laughs> two tons. Am I an idiot? I don't think that's what would really happen. Do if you're an idiot, Michael Bay's an idiot. Uh, I mean, maybe no, those are two things that island, don't go together. And, uh, Just because I'm right about that doesn't make me not an idiot. You know, exposure and quite a bit of coverage. Everybody's gonna sort of be looking at what we're doing. And uh, people are going to be holding you up to some pretty ideals, and no one, no one, no one really. Some pretty does ideals. I feel like there's who, another who sort of only word in there. Okay, the anyway. has any concept of what it takes really to make you know a movie, how, to put a movie together? Yeah, you know, McFarlane always said he wanted to make Spawn a household mentally, name. It's completely. Yeah. One of my goals for Spawn long, here was for anybody long, that knows what Malbolgi well, is to get them to call it Bolgi. I don't know if I succeeded at that with anybody, but Bolgi. And, uh, it's gonna be a thing, too. Um, you know, yeah. and Mark, Mark can keep his cool through the whole thing. You know, and he's always got. I mean, no matter you know, no matter how difficult the problem can be, and how cumbersome it can be to solve it, sometimes he's number one. He's got the ability to solve it, but number two, he can sort of keep his cool. And 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 the. Uh, I feel like the, these the are things that McFarland would say about himself. People like yeah. like, he, like and, he's and talking about how great Mark is. Like I feel like if it was McFarland and, and talking right now, it would be. Is, is, uh, I'm is, so great is, under is, pressure. Uh, is I'm so cool. Because um, I think the town is. Uh, Especially with you know with new people who they're so afraid of. There's a lot less McFarlane. They're so used to people who scream, be or I who scream because they don't they necessarily know. Maybe what when to they do, put this know? together, they decided and that a movie like Spawn. This stuff was the interesting there's stuff. There's a million and just things that wheels. Mark or myself had never done before. When we do and you him, think that we're going to know the right decision the every time saying, that, that, that question comes up? Is uh, this scene is just not? It's just not right. I mean, I'm with you. You don't eat rotten food. We knew back then. Like even if you're homeless, you don't eat rotten food. I've heard you go. It doesn't make sense. When uh, Glenn, he's gonna be sick, Zach's dad, which is worse. In the PG you have medical help. Doesn't make sense. That's not something you hit your kid over. You know, the there are many things you can hit your kid over. That is not one of them. Uh, okay, okay, if you wanted to do a comment. <laughs> The HBO animation, the HBO we're animated really series pushing the PG. Oh man, I'm pushing the boundaries, the boundaries of comedy on the, cha on the, the channel. Yeah, it was truer to Spawn in the sense of being very graphic, very stylized. Now this is in character confusing. for Spawn in the comics. Again, he would kill a man kind of over over. over audience appeal that I mean, we you shouldn't beat your kids, but mysterious. And if you were, were new, oh, he should have he should have had tattoos all over the man that said, "I beat my kids." That's what he should have done. An extreme. I beat my kids over eating. Creator Spawn. 
Todd McFarlane. Is, is that a reference to, oh, you notice? About they, making the Spawn They keep movie. doing that? Right. They said, Todd, what they have would you someone like to set do it up so you know it's McFarlane talking? And my answer was, oh, no, I take yeah. the 35 million bucks and The creator of Spawn, God McFarlane. That would actually be helpful sometimes with these with these kinds of comments. They go back and forth. Yeah, that's true. But I don't think they've done it every time. But again, we were talking about Clint Goldman. Because this does not make sense what we're doing right now. Working with Spaz and working with Michael DeLuca. Wait, do we cut to Todd for like 10 seconds? Mike is a very smart, sort of brash, uh, the here, Spawn, Tom McFarlane. Hi, I made Spawn, material, you know, and uh, I'm in the sky. The thing about Spawn, and, and back to the rest of your well, commentary. That, I mean, that was a, a movie that was made all in. And for, now back you know, to your regular sc- million He's the commercials. That's... $30 million worldwide. And Spaz and I, working with Chuck Russell, you know, and, and Spawn, really did, we'll be right think, back. an excellent job on the We were talking about Bulgy earlier. I cannot get my mind and, uh, over... about the same time all this is occurring... The, the brilliance uh, of some of these effects, and, and then the laziness of other effects. It's so Spawn. weird. He shot the product... Make the studio, puppet! And in particular, Sony. He tried to make yeah. a deal at Sony, but... Let you really enhance the puppet! ...more than Sony was going to let him control his baby. He especially wanted to control the merchandise. You worked in Star Wars! You know about puppets? Oh, but maybe George Lucas like got to him. Guys in the maybe that's yeah, why they're banned from the Skywalker the ranch. They're all like, we don't like puppets. We're anti-puppets. But they're only banned for a year, and then that yeah. year is when, but it's when George Lucas, but it's this point doing on puppets. Yeah, because at this point, this point you know, Lucas would be like, well, I'm sure you're kind of not so keen on the puppets, too, you know? I also I don't really want a guy to be stuck in a little room having to watch me on a monitor while he's got Yoda, like I... He said, go. Do we miss the point where, where, where Clown pitches this to him and he Steve goes, that's a good idea? I think so. Can we talk over the people talking over that scene? Because <laughs> that's one of my favorite awful line reads is that's a good idea. Pretty much if somebody makes a commentary of us doing a commentary to this commentary, I will hate happily If somebody makes a commentary of us doing a commentary to this commentary, I will happily post that all over social media. Pretty satisfying. At least at this point, we get a chance to design the action and all the characters. Director? No Mark one's Capel. crazy enough. It was an insane first movie. Someone person. just said challenge accepted. It was actually them. ridiculous. Here we are, first time filmmaking. Someone just said. That's going to be all the comments. It's just challenge, challenge accepted, sir. Challenge accepted, sir. Challenge accepted, a movie sir. that involves so many complexities. Prosthetic makeup. If you made it this far into the video, write challenge accepted, sir. Children that only can work for a few hours a day. So many was just You can't say that if you're not going to do it. I think it made my liver hard. Is that possible? I think it did. It hard boiled my liver. <laughs> okay, making your liver hard and hard boiling your liver, two different things. So we shot I'm it all working on that right now myself. The, the way we planned it and analyzed it and put it together, and uh, we one of those. I don't know which one. You have to make a few changes for the rating PG-13, but not nearly as many as we ended up having to make. Here is an example of another. Uh, that would suck, so they right? Didn't, right? So they didn't know when they started? Childhood. No, 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 this what he was saying was... The rooftop, spawns going, or what I, what I think... Because he had a bunch of changes to make it... Or, like, or, or I guess goes, they thought maybe they could get well, no, away with some stuff. He, 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 he said we, we, th- we thought we'd have to make a few changes. Not nearly as many as we thought we were going to have to make. Of course, soup in your mama's crotch. There's no dirty words, but somehow they just could not let us have it. And then we had to cut that line. Because it's gross. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and that, that one here is here. Yeah. The DNA is spelled D O A. We just. That one I totally get caught in for PG 13. Yeah, no. That's gross. Yeah. Training for what's coming. Now get. Now let's get down to business. The clown, it happens to be one of my favorite ones. Too. But the clown the is um, oh, oh. a very critical cr- I think. character of the film, obviously. He I think is that the was antagonist. The but also his transformation of Violator was a really big moment of the film. We had to make that be superlative. It's revealing the big monster. That, yeah, you can movie. laugh at me if you want to. And uh, it was really Whenever I watch this is the one part I always kind of look forward to. It was a very the, big the, like, the, the violator transformation is cool. Transformation. I'm Mark and I have done I several transformations just because it's a thing from ranging from uh, the abyss to Terminator. That and, it was uh, one of the few things that I had on the mask. looked this at in the comic was a little before different. We just didn't want I could to get my hands on when I was a kid as we call them before we saw this movie. Morph. Um, we wanted to do something. I didn't see the theater, uh, but I saw it shortly after. Not only had a transformation going on, but actually showed some form of an emotion. Hey, you know, while he was going and through just it. getting to see that so, play out. You know, Mark had this on, on the screen. They don't have much of a fight and stuff, and then they do the crucifix, the crucifixion thing. But he was also elated and almost. Oh no, Clown's got a dog. You always talk about how much how much you like Spawn when you were a kid. The choice of the type of shot that was done was using a secular crane shot, where we sort of brought the camera around almost. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if it holds uh, up. 180 degrees, and we use a tennis There's ball. There's that low print section that I just don't want to have to buy. Yeah, I don't on. have to spend 20, 30 bucks a piece on those. To, uh, 
Um, and then hate them and then probably the sell them to a What if they're really good? Later. Worry about constructing. We had two elements. We had to go yeah, from the this odds, clown, you know, who dimensionally is quite different from Violator, who was. But nobody's five, read them, so how would they know? Foot, yeah. how, how would we know? So. And uh, into an eleven foot tall. If only creature. someone would do a series going through every um, issue of Spawn, so, the construction so that he could let us know whether Spawn's actually good or bad. Meant that we had to have elements that fit. Here's a bunch like of B words here. He says Vindicator. That's one of the full name as the arm of the arm of Brothers. I can't remember if any of the other ones are there. Violator. There it comes. So as these things are growing, we're, we're adding crunching sounds. This doesn't look great, but looks good for the time. To yeah, for the time. That this it definitely going does. A huge struggle in order to do that, and we don't want to have to cut away. Some of what much. was fun about that too uh, was the really halfway to point. And the, we, the, uh, I wanted to try and bring off this concept of immense hat. weight mm -hmm. um, going from the smaller And I think the mouth looks character. better here. It looks great. Because um, uh, if, if you do the, the uh, elongated the jaw, it would look weird. Put bolts of lightning in behind your head. It's a smart choice. No, it is elongated. Not as much as it's The right in your face as opposed to typically when it's shot at the time of It seems to vary with the shot, maybe? And it's longer there. I didn't need that. Try to make bring lightning right in your eye. Yeah, that's probably what um, And also illuminate the character. It's the only reason he has a mask is in case too. monsters uh, lick him. The skin quality, we're going from like a leather jacket to oh, sorry, essentially a scaly skin creature. These are all animated texture masks we're using. A lot of this is puppet, isn't using. it? So it's not all CGI. We're painting right? texture for an entirely CG clown at the beginning. Computer graphics clown and an entirely this? CG violator. Yeah, so over time, we're bringing on all these different elements together in a symphony. I mean, the shot itself took about eight months to do. Todd McFarlane. But we wanted to see if I could physically, given that I created this there is, two dimensionally, if I could be in a scene where I physically meet him, and that he actually turns his gun on me, so that it's like my own character is now turned upon me. Because again, we've got a, a bit of a weird cut here. The here. violator actually picks up uh, one of the bombs. The dad that gets Some attacked. people have actually mistook that that's actually me, and that I actually even get killed by my own creations to some degree. And if they want to think that, that makes it that much more amusing. When the violator kind of crashes on job. the ground, yeah. there's a scene very shortly thereafter in which he grabs Glenn, the father of Zack, and beats the crap out of him. Well, in the PG-13 version, we had to we had to cut oh, some yeah, of those shots it, it, out. People thought that also, was Also, we were unable to work with the actor. Okay, had to go somehow it should have been. Somehow, somehow Violator looks Titanic. good, and the, and the guy looks like shoot, a PlayStation cut. Days, actually. Well, PlayStation so cut. In fact, Isn't that weird? Part of the time, Glenn is a digital. And it's it's all fabric. Player. It wasn't even like they had to deal with human skin. Now, I've been sort of trying to yeah, was, list a few of the eyes that's definitely take out for the MPA PG-13 rating. Just behind it. This example of. Glenn being it seems by just Violator. The reason yep. why we, I even yep. had that You're in right. the film was to sort of show the terror of the Violator, his monstrosity, his evil, and how he affects ordinary humans. Violator's not big in the comics, innocent right? Innocent people. He's, he's, One of the he's, things he's, as well he was the scrappy, right? Violator? Violator? Learning yeah. No, he's enormous. Reality. Is he? Yeah. It's not so simple. If you I are going to like fight violence, with violence, you will. Huh? I thought you said gangly arms and legs. And legs. No, he's pretty big. People. And again, in this case, Glenn is one of those people. My, my take I think on the Glenn scale here is pretty close. Is probably a little more simplistic. Maybe he's a that. little bigger here. You know, I don't storyboard know. Storyboard called from to be picked up and thrown. Right. What I try to do when when I'm directing the animation is to allow the guys to have fun. You know, do something that you always want to do. I mean, when you're in animation school, the first thing you do is draw Mickey Mouse with a machine gun shooting everybody. That right? is something I have heard so other comics. Not that down. exact so phrase said, of like Mickey Mouse with a machine gun. You know, but like Tim the Aaron first thing you do when you get to animation school is you bit, draw a dirty picture. Right? We got the or something like we that. We hadn't really established um, an end frame range for the shot. The problem was the shot ended up, ended up looking so good. Then we got the call from Mark saying, look at MPA, just think it's going to be too violent. So we, we had a hard I like the stomach. You know, yeah. I like that it sucks in and then it comes back out. We were, it, it's upsetting. That I mean, some of the first there. times yeah, we've ever had like, like, computer like, graphics. Turning back into clown actually looks designed better designed than turning to Violator. And every this one of those frames great. costs us a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that's a bad special effect. It just doesn't look that good. Another part I would bring out here that we had to censor, this is an interesting thing. Again, you don't want to affront the religious people in America. We've learned the lesson many times. And this is sort of a symbolic and moment in which Spawn like, has said no to like the devil. The I ain't gonna obnoxious. join you. I ain't gonna lead your army. But the performance so the is so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. He crucifies him. In the PG-13, hey, he's the best live action play it all in close-ups, so you couldn't see the Spawn actually being. Oh, crucified. that's weird. But again, he is sacrificing himself. Oh, you didn't realize that that was John Leguizamo? No, no, no. I'm listening to what they're saying. Oh, and there's also in the PG-13 version, this is all close-up. Oh, so you can't see the so you can't see the crucifixion. He's going to ride the Wanda carousel of love. So weird. You had to trim all of those innuendos from the scene as well. Ride the one that cares so well, not so bad. I only saw that the PG-13 version once, and it's not on DVD. Mm. 
That's the thing you can only get on VHS, I think. I don't think they ever released it that way. Yeah. I'm half interested in watching it again now. Are you really? Not really. You at one the last one there gets her. Just to experience the differences again and, and know it. So but this is this is a great scene really. between uh, Kobe Ostrowski and uh, Spawn, did in not, which she sort of reveals didn't have a problem the with, the, with the NBA. Now I cast Nicole yeah. Williamson and feel very fortunate about it's being able to get It's it seems a real arbitrary the lines they had to change and the ones they could keep. Yeah, how did they, they do this only in close up? All those great English guys can tell me all kinds of great stories about their drinking nights. Well, it's because uh, you can't see his arms. He also had a great understanding of no, but him, but Kobe Ostrowski walking up, how they how they do that in only close ups as an historical figure. Yeah, and he brought a lot to the to the role. He also so, uh, was really fun to have on the set because we had a piano. You know what? This inspired with the break into pile in a Smallville. He's a great musician. He's also quite a character and a great guy to go to just about oh. because he can hold his liquor. And that the best probably, you know, because that's uh, not I an obvious but, um, thing. He really. You know, other people were crucified. He came in the it set could be a reference to one of them. That's true. Except this is a thing about heaven and hell. Because he's kind of got an infamous history that he's probably quite proud of, and I would be if I was him. And uh, so his very first day, he sort of he sort of let it be known that he was a madman. But somehow, I would we also hit be it, proud it, of it was, it was one of these freakish moments, like, "Oh fuck, what am I going to do?" <laughs> but then all of a sudden, the next day, we're the best of friends, and he and he, and he really was a uh, which just through the evolution of dealing with uh, that kind of. Well, I, I think I, I I can relate to the kind of maniacal mentality. For Nickel, it, there was some interesting. Is he talking about the guy that plays Cogby Ostrom? Historical relevance or the yeah. kind of mythological reality. But I think he was kind of coming into this like, wow, what, what, what is this really? I mean, there really was. He, like, he didn't know what Spawn was. He read the story and thought this is kind of wild. But he was he came with a little bit of a, let's see what this is all about. Actually. And he's just and a stage guy, right? The, the, the like he's he's a guy that every time I watch this, I'm about. like, I feel like he probably I'm supposed to wear is this? in a lot of things I've never this, seen. This is Cagliostro. But then I feel like I look it up and he's not. You know he's who not like an actor. Is? I haven't. Like There's actor. a little bit of that. In I haven't. So I'm not sure. And uh, but we managed to work it out, and uh, and it was a, a very successful collaboration. He has that kind of presence where, like, you're like, oh, he did all these British one. movies, but I don't think he does. Which, which is essentially a headbutt right in the face. I think yeah, he's a good guy. You yeah, put your hand and butt the guy, and, and he butts you, breaks yeah. your nose. And the guy's a huge guy. Actually, you know that funny story? I had my daughter on the set. It was like a year old. You know that funny story? I have one. I'm walking. He comes walking. So the story. No, I'm gonna tell it. All right. Silent. Everybody kind of clears quietly. My daughter sees him, and she screams. She screams her head off, and then he tur he looks and he goes, "The story of my life," and turns and walks away. <laughs> yeah. That was that funny he was, story. He was on the set. He was brilliant in that respect. His his retorts at the at these moments where levity was required. He Man, was, he was the one. And you should hear this guy play the piano and sing. It is unbelievable. He really is multi talented. We Nickel. should have put him in a piano role. I, want, I almost added a dance number because of that. <laughs> Cagliostro should I'll have played you, though, the Nick, piano. We're coming to Amsterdam to party. You better be ready. Todd McFarlane. People look at Spawn sometimes and go, well, it's kind of dark and he's very edgy and, you know, why is it kind of bleak? And, and my answer is I, I, I believe that Spawn and the themes that I presented, especially in the comic book, given that I've been doing it for five years, so, you know, that is people further really along in advance say, than what we're going to see bleak? here in the bleak. movie. Uh, is that he's, more likely he's a flawed say, hero, this and so sometimes he should acts on impulse. Now, why is it? He has what the concept of it is? He, he's angry when he does something, he's a and I think hero. that each he's one of us in the audience can say we've done the same thing. He's a so flawed. The guys that are more perplexing to me are Superman, who never makes a wrong decision, no matter what the circumstance is. That's not true. He always does the right thing at the you right time with the right people, and he never says a cuss word, and he just he's he's a Boy Scout that's 35 years old, and it's. To me, he's the unreal character that has really no humanity it's left. Really he's no 13-year-old boy has ever thought so, this, Todd. So the story that we're trying to present it's here, and hopefully you'll get in this movie, hard. is the fact yes. that it's not that my guy is, virtu is a virtuous yeah, the man. Yeah, the point is not pure, that he's Because there has to be a reason why hell picked them. But I just wanted to, to place... Kind of again. You, I mean, that's true, right of course. That's why it's some that's why the story is so hard to pull off. And and because uh, again, you don't want to. Unfortunately, know, he was I'm not, not the guy to do it because to, to that great of an extent. He's supposed so to turn into like a hero, but he's, he's go in there he is the guy hell would pick. You know what mm -hmm. most people perceive to be the truth in the Bible, because again, and then it never felt like he just was just bad enough for hell to pick him. So then we have to make him as awful as he seems just by the way he treats people, because he doesn't know how to make somebody sympathetic. Making it black and white. 
but and that's why he punches one in the stomach when she's pregnant. Supposedly normal people. It should be really easy to make a character that the at, of the world, the outcast, at, at work you know, is a monster, but then is able to go home to, and not let and, it. And given yeah, that, that, that sure, should be your hand is that he's a family man, but he still does terrible things. People do this all the time. Yeah, so he is caring, just not about anybody but the people he cares about. Yeah. If he was walking down our or, street, or or he's almost a split personality, house, like not really, say, mm -hmm. or he can, man. he can, and I want he can fight it. But he is someone who's able to get people all this at work. Yeah, yeah, it just so happens that his work is murdering. Yeah, it's it's the, it's just business mentality. And say we don't care that you're burning. We don't care. Someone has to do it because each one of us has problems too. You're just like one of us. Welcome. You can come here too. And we also state. Cagliostro, that it is a holy ground, so on some level, was he placed back there, I, I've stated in the comic books a little bit, that he was drafted by hell, but he's placed by heaven, and there's a reason why he's in those alleys, because those alleys have a deeper meaning. I love listening to Todd talk about the uh, mythology. Not just the mythology, level, but like the rules of the mythology. Over spawn are actually that the heaven gets the to sky, place you, but when hell picks you, and like... Our whole perspective of I our love listening to... He has a whole thing on one, on one of the like animated films about... About... Watching out for it. And so just trying to throw some of these bigger ideas... Which side gets which animals? Heaven and hell, which we all have... Again, some kind of you know definition of, and I'm just trying to see if I can't distort those. A Except bit. for atheists. The motorcycle sequence. This is our big action sequence, and this we don't all have big complex shooting. You know, camera well, cars. Well, definitions of uh, what big heavy they are in mythologies at that point, right? But I don't think it's because he's really said all personally. Kinds of we all have that personally. Cement blocks into place. We're dumping like ten thousand gallons of liquid green goo. Are we, are, are we at the end of this movie? No, no, no. no. This is about half. This is about the halfway point. We have uh, it mowing down a real fence system oh, we had yeah. set up. No, no, no. It's, we have it's a uh, stunt driver. We're setting up the third act. We got we got thirty minutes I, left. I always think we drive to one of those. We have a little fight scene, and then the fence hits him. What I always really remember, and the motorcycle the first time I saw this, the wall. We were scared. it was got late allergies. and I had to go to bed right after this scene. Out of it and just For whatever reason, I always remember that. Actually, that like, this, this was a my first viewing of this was split there, up in two days. Some, I'm pretty sure we shoot that T2 here. That were it looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Scary to witness. Who's driving? Oh, hey, hey. Oh, who's driving? It's all of these, all the motorcycle well, riding and driving is stunt related. Um, and they're just reference rows. Like for example, all him driving through the explosive charges. Sometimes they're even kind of cliche, even when they're going through the rows. And these guys, they're not right now, but these guys keep talking about it like it's like really clever dialogue. And even when this, it's for gross, example, the, uh, early on the it's clever in the kind of in CG. Another brilliant cape shot. This is a practical motorcycle rig we had built to match the CG motorcycle. I never liked this. I remember all liking it a lot when I was a kid. It's for all stunt work and uh, uh, practical effects. And this it, is really it feels dumping this gigantic load dying. of stuff, and the motorcycle yeah. is really going through. I was thinking that. Bo both the motorcycle Just and the oh, no. uh, and the goo it's were the enhanced dip. in post production. The, dip. the motorcycle was given an energy shield that was enhanced by a group okay. called Core. I kind of didn't armor the wheels and, uh, so they didn't slip. Effects group in Toronto. And the uh, the green goo was also and you enhanced. You liked it as a green the, energy because the luminance you know, of the green was made much more, much brighter. Slash psychoplasm. And uh, that was enhanced by uh, Jimmy Simmons at uh, Western Images in San Francisco. I'm gonna ask for psychoplasm and, for uh, Christmas. And both those little things, they they add some up psychoplasm. That's all you want for Christmas? Mm -hmm. And then here, of I'll course, buy some gak. I'll write psychoplasm. This is a CG okay. effect. So I mean, words, you know what you can do with you know what you can do with uh, psychoplasm and is going to really explode, yes. but it never hits our hero spawn. That was added digitally. But this is a real explosion. What? It, it, hit, a, it hit a rig. We, uh, Never hit. He's, oh, he's got a big oh, armored spike around him. Just so you know, John Linguizamo was not launched 25 feet into the air. And uh, we uh, had a real explosion at uh, 5 in the morning. Like, I do without to a rig, yeah. The There's no respawn comics. One of the most beautiful defining shots. No respawn comics, do you? He's standing looking at the fire like that. It, hurt, that it hurts. It, no, it hurts. We actually work with 20 different effects. I bought some really cool things Hong with Kong, the money Japan, I got Toronto, from those, Vancouver, but it hurts. All over oh. California, London. And it shouldn't. I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm, a, and, uh, I'm, we I'm, I'm, I'm broke. I'm a broken man. The clock. It was kind of an interesting reality for me I'm because at any man. hour of it's the day, be there was okay. somebody it's awake and working on okay. the which meant that myself and my wife were living very little, stop. which is uh, probably the way well, to That's funny for me. You're having fun. Sure. What well, you're going to see here as uh, Wanda's sleeping. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> As you can see, one of the things we, we presented here too is these kind of arty farty transitions, if you will. 
It, it looks like water kind of forming into a form. To the comic books uh, than than your traditional movie. What are you going to see here? These kind of <laughs> you know, voiceovers and these kind of Wait, did you hear he you said? Know, hands from one. He thinks this another, scene is the scene, scene that's closer, closer to com 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 a quality to the comic books. Bounce to him again, maybe to some people. Yeah, well, what does that mean? I don't know. But funny. then he, well, he went on to say that like you know, the comics would, are better than regular movies. Like that scene was better than regular movies. Again, most movies don't do it, so why don't we do it? Whether it's successful or not, again, becomes personal taste. But you know, we we always set out trying to do something a little bit, you know, uh, out of the ordinary, uh, along those those same ideas that that the whole idea of this guy taking this fantasy world and doing different things with it. And one of the things that that I brought into it is that each one of these characters is is on some level based upon people that I know, especially the major ones. Uh, like Spawn, Wynn, that he says as Jason Wynn has this massive gun, uh, that he can this no crazy have, cartoon gun. Know, and it's not by accident that my wife, who I've been with for 20 years, uh, is 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 named Wanda. The little child right here that he's trying to scare and that she's. Well, surprised he made this long in the contract before he brought uh, this is up. Is named Cyan, and again, it he might probably be didn't. Name, but I just it didn't hear really really about this child. I got a lot of help. From my actors, in particular, I got a you lot know the of problem with Wanda in this is him being kind of we're the supposed to care, sort of legitimizing. Yeah. yeah, we're supposed to care at this point. She's really helped in. me out in circumstances. I mean, this I actress, I guess, is fine, but she gets all right. things, uh, so I don't know. Always willing to be there to make things work better. Uh, you know, reading lines off camera. Do he did a lot of his own stunts? I was just really impressed by the she guy, did, and a lot of that. She's a pretty lady. One that one that has to be gorgeous to make things work. I mean, if you. If you put her in the right outfits and really gussied her up, like she could, she could be one of the comics, but they just didn't do anything with her. You know, we created a digital spawn in the movie. And their spawn is not just the actor and makeup. Yeah, she's not a child actor. The actor makeup with computer animation added to him, and sometimes it's completely computer generated. No real actor at all on the screen. Spawn was the most elaborate CG model ever built. You know, humanoid. But to me, even though we have a digital actor, how long it went before that was no longer the case? Yeah. Are the actor themselves. It's like Batman 89 was the at the they time the most the expensive film are, shot. When in they animate the Europe, character, whether it be Spawn that, or the Violator, that can't be they true know anymore. his performance, they know what it will do. So I would treat the I mean, it probably wasn't true. Oh, you know what? Actors, but but I know what? Ideas that if, if nothing else, I guarantee you it's immediately taught by George Banks. To me, there's no reason to be afraid. Oh, good I, call. I'm not yeah. even a, I'm not, I don't care about replacing actors getting rid of them. That's not my principle at all. You know what's weird about this movie? create characters that I can create no other way. It feels like it should be a big budget movie, but everything about it screams low budget B movie. Well, that's why I said that about Michael J. Williams. It feels like he's a B movie actor. It should be the way his fault, the way the computers look, the way some of the special effects look. This is... That's not That's not your your $40 million movie. That's in your $8 million movie. They have to understand the character and bring it to life. So oh, through and, their hands or manipulation, the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie resonated with me on some level. Mm -hmm. In fact, on other movies that we've worked on together, like Jurassic Park or even on Spawn, the computer animators would actually you know act the scene is? out as if they somewhere were the character. Somewhere in so you get up there and embarrass yourself for everyone else, pretending you're a dinosaur, pretending you're Spawn, or pretending you're Violator. I want to pretend so I'm a dinosaur. So we actually had them rehearse physically, and that's. That's the way I approach it. So it's we just a matter of degree, just like you have an actor inside of a you know suit, you don't clown? see him, but he's in the suit. Andy now we have this computer Yeah, I mean, you could say that about any computer, character that we that see JG on any level, because any circus question. can do anything. You know, you know, some directors will feel more comfortable with reasoning, because it's amazing. all about reasoning yeah, with somebody in order to get a performance. Oh my God. You know, uh, a director will want to phone the actor and talk to him on the phone and say, look, he was great. He was great in Age Ultron, where he got to act as a person, a human being. Somebody who's tangibly there, some will find it easier to reason with somebody who's not there, and they have full control over. And it's just going to be a question because there's going to be a lot of directors that are going to stick with the older way, and there's going to be a lot of directors that stick with a brand new way, and get some people that use contemporary and the digital. Digital actors are an extension of the filmmaking process. It allows us more options. And it expands the palette of filmmaking. That's all it is. But we'll never eliminate human actors because there is a, there is this fundamental difference: the physicality no, it's all been of an actor physical versus props. the simulation and unreality of a, of a digital actor. You know, yeah. you can touch and feel and grab a real actor. 
but you can't really touch and feel and grab a virtual actor. You can simulate that process. Prove so there's just right this now. difference, this this, this but, tangible thing. So the qualities will always be different. <laughs> okay. in life. Yeah. So he said so the, the, the difference between a real perfect. actor and a digital um, actor is you can touch and feel and grab a real actor. actor. You can't do a digital actor. actor. I mean, I use them because virtual actors can do things. But like if all the actors are digital, sort of an interesting result. People it doesn't matter. Yeah. Back to life. That to me is yeah. But if one isn't, people always have to think it's problematic because they're acting. And that is how we just do back to life. Yeah. Twelve movies and be bored with her. It's not even interesting to me. Some of the problems with real actors create new kinds. It's why John Carter is one of the worst actors ever. The Mickey Mouse of tomorrow. The whole comedy is just them saying. How impressive it is that he can act against nothing. You know, the head That's all that every actor in a high budget movie Marlon is Brando doing now. Yeah. You can create these physical composites that sometimes they're are acting with three or four actors, actors that, that are all that are then acting with nothing. Transform and besides do things and become things that humans besides each other, I should say. Whether people like it or not, it's going to happen. I mean, people thought that film would destroy the theater. Now it becomes a place for people to hone. I don't want to scrutinize every sentence. People thought that black and white film would be destroyed by color, but every time it's always relative. So the first case. Well, he's talking, he's talking about digital effects. Whether people art, like the digital effects or not, they're going because to. Because that's what they, they call digital, digital wizards. That's because oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I want to be a digital wizard. It was like a jigsaw puzzle. I played a lot of games of D&D. I never graduated the thing digital is that wizard. Digital wizard. Shots, like a lot of people know. And when they saw the film it's later on, they liked it enough so that they continued to give us more money. But we ended up with more than... You know, all oh! hundred visual effect shots in the movie. Who this saw sequence, this movie example, liked enough to give it more money? Was, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the heart monitor. Could you imagine this movie back. without oh, any special effects? Here's the, here's the yeah. insanity. Mark figured out a way to tell the story of uh, Spawn using his powers of his eyes. But the only shots we had were of Martin Sheen on his back. And we, and we basically used the existing pieces of film. And you'll notice it's a little awkward. You know, his hand stays up the whole time. Originally, when we started the movie, we didn't know how we were going to make yeah. hell. In fact, yeah. we weren't going to yeah, make hell. Yeah, it is awkward. It was going to be a. Could you imagine seeing this movie without any of the special effects and hell. being like, "Oh, this is this Originally, is good. Let me give you some a, more money." Proof, uh, could they not have given them enough money again, so that they could turn Jessica Priest budget. into a she spawn? There, really, there wasn't really any but money in the budget at all. Please, create hell. There was. We had sort of planned and talked about five hundred more dollars that would exist. It was before the days of Kickstarter. There was nothing we could do. Or also the possibility oh, of a room so that was about underneath you think the room, a basement room that was a, a sort of subterranean room that was still that would actually the get or connected to the house. Why is it either through the portal or through some sort that? of opening because he's uh, still the floor of the I, apparently he's still floor. shopping it around because otherwise it's going like to be sort of started by now he's always shopping it around uh, he's done with his script and they had actually started to design he's also he's Phil also Patterson. always shopping around it's fun the mock up yeah I think that the more the more we looked at it the more we realized that especially given our backgrounds that we had at least. Try to attempt Ooh, to look how provocative and perverse it is. Right. And they actually give, you know, there were a the couple of make painting more shots, a couple of pump pump shots in hell, but no real opportunity to tell any any of the story of hell. So right, right, just before photography no started, no opportunity. Um, I got enough well, chutzpah one budget. weekend I mean, that's, where I sort of sat down time, and I mapped out you can a tell plan. Tell the story of it though. Um, Could that, that involved, be more of a uh, sort of? Uh, uh, it just means they can't go there um, and do things. Oh, I risky from a lot of people's points of view. Which was You're to definitely take right about that. the total number of shooting days that Mark had to shoot the movie for principal photography and eliminate we, we set seven stories of them in hell uh, and, and in an effort to pay for more digital effects. Like, it's and so what we did was we dropped uh, we dropped seven days like, from photography uh, and, so and agreed to, to shoot yeah. the movie in sixty three. Alan McElroy got paid. I could have written this in sixty. It was like signing like, a deal like with not the being himself. like we all had to sign this form. Or, I could have written this movie in sixty. Uh, it would have been and as good here to sign this well, form. Well, it's almost like for example, you're trying to appeal to that age group to try to make it seem like it was made by that age group. To build the basement set, Philip Harrison, he had to agree on paper, contractually, sort of, to 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 give that money back to the production so we could then spend ah! it at Santa Ooh. Barbara Studios. So we set up a small wow, second unit uh, that Spaz and, and, and myself sort of uh, ramrodded nice. and set up a blue screen unit to, uh, to shoot the, the elements for hell. And by doing that and running that unit concurrently with first unit, we were able to save <laughs> about a million bucks and shoot in 63 days. We took that money and we gave You're it to Santa Barbara Studios, and then with uh, with Mark's help, spawned. Uh, Mark to pay with a change we found in our in our uh, from Santa Barbara Studios to design what hell was going to look like. It took so much energy to create. It's three and a half minutes. Put some of it into the cave. And know. actually, it was again a jigsaw puzzle. That and looks I, cool. And I, I have to thank my editor, Michael Canoe. He assisted me a lot in this yeah, because and then we they had just, to wade through the hell and then 
find a way sense, to construct this longer story. See my story other commentary kind of and review for a while. Had, <laughs> or watch the film. Really and feel free to, to talk about it yourself. Amongst yourself. You're likely to so possibly say so the same thing. thing. thing was really put together with the, with the few limited shots that we were able to do blue screen with Nicole Williamson, as well with a couple of the shots. There's a digital cognostro created completely by Spaz and the people at ILM, but again, we can only do that in a uh, very minimal way. Oh, that's way that digital cognostro we were just hearing about. Yeah, we didn't color correct any of this. Also, you'll notice in the sequence, there's a lot of what we call double cutting of shots. And the reason is, is I could only do one five second take and then I would cut it up into three two-second pieces. So in other words, the, the, the sa I would have to cut back to the same angle, maybe a different portion Wait, of the this, shot, because I was very limited in the angles I had available to about, me. About his, his new movie and how uh, much Santa smaller Barbara and Santa Barbara was so very stretched to limit. So much and we this. only had so much time and money to give them, but better we stretched so much them totally I, I, to the, I'd like the to very see edges I mean, of even I like failing the idea to of the smaller, more understated, so more spawned movie, maybe. I, not written I by wanted to do I, I, more I'm sorry to say. In other but, words, the things that well, and all there's, but you can like do that's not a bad idea. That might be a cool setup yeah, film, film to then, you know what I mean? Like, was you, originally like, shot you can make that a standalone thing this way. and then do the that full blown go to hell, you know. Well, well and you can do I turned it this movie and slowed it way, from way, Sam and Twitch's perspective. Oh, yeah, sure you can. That's what that's what the film really should be doing. What I don't get is that that movie is not supposed to have Sam in it. That's We came up with this great method. This guy, Hawk, one of the animators, came up with this great method for beating up Spawn. Violator by violator, oh, grabbing them, smacking so them into the ground. So we kind of reuse that animation in a couple of places. It works very well. Actually, I got to the point where Mark said, "Okay, look, no more beating up Spawn. I mean, he's getting the, you know, it's like really it's like getting the green, hell kicked out of him." Like, like green fuzzy spider. I got a call from New Line one day. Aren't you guys be beating green green Spawn up a little bit too much the same way? The Hell's Army originally Here comes the we were stupidest not thing in the entire movie. The Hell's Army was oh, so yeah. limited, we only get to show it in extremely I've wild shots. I've got this energy that just but shoots out at me and, and kills all these other the spawn spawns that have the it, uh, same uh, powers I have. Actually, one of their own guys in, a, in hundreds of different Feels places, like a complete afterthought. So we get them closer to camera, so the I've feeling of the before. army could be much more vibrant and energetic. Vibrant. These are examples. Some of the shots here that I think were very successful on Santa Barbara's part, and where they create this very massive space with this giant figure. There are moments here that I, that I like. Uh, I there, are there are moments here moments that you here like. That I like. These examples of the spawns being blown Please apart elaborate. by Please which, which, uh, which moments? Which moments here? Blown apart by spawns, in this two minutes Those were actually computer we... animated by ILM using the most motion capture that Spawn that Spaz referred to earlier. I mean, I mean, actually, I would say every single dollar we spend is up on the screen there. And, and uh, one of the things we did was very effective. What All six of them. We would double cut shots or reuse shots or repurpose them. People would use that term in ways that were very, end up being oh, very clever. Oh, you didn't even get close, Bulgy. He was like, it is the true. slowest attempt at a grab. That was terrible. It didn't get a little you will flat. never make it in football. Just, it takes Wait. more time, really, to, cre to create that richness. You'll That's never make it. You'll make it none of the balls. Yeah, none of the balls. Hockey ball. You'll make it none of them. His legs might... Um, literally the Might last be a little faster than soccer, soccer ball, ball yeah. Delivered in the Maybe, last you know. Six weeks. And Hockey like ball, I don't know about so much, you know. Eight days, you know. I mean, I'll tell you honestly. I don't know if you can hold a stick. The thing that almost made my ulcer complete. You know, it was you know what, 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 what his, his, his so score probably is? The, Bulgy probably plays a cross. To the across. spine of the film. <laughs> and literally, I wasn't seeing completed shots till the very end. It we, was, and it wasn't a surprise. I mean, we, knew, we knew the day that we made sort of the decision to drop those days. Carrasco's <laughs> more than enemy on the we lacrosse knew, field. We knew, we knew back then. <laughs> what a crop. Bulgy's here again. I don't know what a crump it is if you go play cricket. But we knew that it was our only choice. You know, So we sort of... We sort of went into it, you know, Mark and I sort of, just the two of us sort of said, let's just... You know, sometimes, we can't, we can't you listen to commentaries, you just listen to creators happen, talk about know, things, they talk about we just, we, we, how, we, how, know, how we, difficult we, things we were disappointed in ourselves. Uh, budgetarily, we there were all these and restrictions, so how they're able to make something you know, beautiful, step, yeah. so yeah. out of be all of these restrictions. Um, you know, conflict creates art. This is not have. That's a very strange thing to think about. And also, they were of had a lot of money, how'd you get to this house? How'd you find me here? I'm going to be even at this point, $40 million is not a ton, but like... the course that it would take. You know, we knew... Who are you working for? Poor child, progress. that you were able and to we find we my home that day, that we were in, we miles were away from the alley in fact, you we were, in. and uh, I think, you know, really I'm surprised at how far we got, but really, in terms of time, had we had another five or six, you know, three or four right, months, okay. I know you weren't there, a lot we've done, you know, did you make five of that? you got to make the most of what you have remember. in the time that you have to work with.
I think we were still complaining about the energy thing. I just want to say something about I did always like really that. Difficult I, I mean, I bring don't know that it makes any sense, but life in the Violator coming world, through the walls kind of fun. Oh, we're having the reverse conversation of Topic 4. How hard it is to bring two-dimensional comics to the 3D realm. In the movie, the jaw can extend and shrink. It's tough. In the comic book, it's, it's real hard. Time, and that's because the violator's mouth is always open in the comic book. But in the movie, he's he's moving, and his mouth is opening and closing. It looks silly when it's closed. Yeah. There it is. That's, there's the, the draw, comic book. Oh, it extends. Yeah. It's closer to the comic book. I don't hate Here's that. Here's the big payoff. Watch this. Batman never would do this. He gets his mask on, and then... Batman would never poof, do this. Spikes through the brain. I'm telling you. Kids love that stuff, and I'm telling you, I'm a 35-year-old kid, and that's cool to me because finally some guy's going, now, okay, the spikes through the brains, that's not enough. Let's take some change and let's cut his head off. I'm telling you, this is cool stuff. Now, because it's goo, it's not really offensive, and if for anybody that finds it a little bit offensive, you turn them into the clown and you take the edge off this, this whole thing that could have been... Ugh, he got his brain and his head cut off, but it's like, no, it's just green jello, and look at the little clowny, and he's saying a little joke here as he goes what back What he's explaining the is, and you can get away with people it, aren't going to think it's cool, because you have to make it a joke. Be really yeah, well, they're disturbed by it, but again, I'm saying, like, well, well, look how edgy it is, we took the edge off of it, yeah, that's okay, but there's a way to basically do the cool stuff and still kind of trick the ratings people into thinking that it's not that bad but but and but i'm going oh so what he's saying kid, is i'm, I'm still an independent guy and i'm winning even though i'm having to work cool. with the with the big dogs the and the heads and stuff yeah come. i'm just i don't care i don't know how much he's really getting away with this on thing. some level if you're a male Nothing. the females don't get it but a male you got to get that part that thing works for me the females they don't get it what they like is that drama. Now, uh, this scene coming I'm up sorry, here, who talks you can like see men and again, women, something that we did throughout female, this movie. Right? We had Angela no. in there. We have some of the uh, the uh, news agents. This lady right here just puts the mic in. She's from the comic book. She got the same cut. Uh, the one that's from the, the same of CNN. Cut. And then the two cops that are leading Jason Wynn out are Sam and Twitch, who are the two detectives that are trying to hunt down Spawn, both in the animation and the comic book. And they and look like him. There. Yeah, Twitch has got his glasses. Literally they look just like him. Kind of he's got the mustache, too. Homage. It's cool. There's the newscaster I was talking about. Yeah, weird, like, as, a, as an homage Hitler to those that are kind of the hardcore Spawn fans, that they could sit there smug in their seat going, I know who that is, you don't. And so whenever you yep, can take the fans and, and people and you can empower them. They weren't going, them, they think how come these important characters weren't in the movie? That's the movie. Uh, the, the Angela thing, okay, maybe was intentional that we like, wanted to. Well, that's not a big deal like character was, because you're you know, as big there, as this was in the comics. You're kind of expecting this to be the first of a franchise. The new heroes come. He's made some kind of movement forward, and that on some levels he will become. And like of course, in the McFarlane kind of promised of the Spawn too, real fast. He's the king, mm -hmm. and he's kind he's of still promising us, right? Yeah, but 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 so we want to give this one last image. Of this guy Quickly from in the hell, comics, acting like there's going to be a, this is eighty nine again, right? Which again yeah. is, you know, the ultimate, you know, uh, symbol. Of, Even to the point of where we go up part way, and then we do a, then we do dissolve the, into the top of, the, of it the because has the we can't make that a seamless shot. Rats, again, are these creatures of the night that are coming to their master, just like the dog, you know? So this is their new master. That's he's, not he's a thing we're explaining in the movie at all. And you get a sense of the Like why the animals are coming up to him and stuff like that. That is a kind of thing. If you catch the green eyes. There's a, our guy the, all his living The creatures of evil that thing get, that I, again, I read that I really hate it. I really resist it in the comics. The, the this idea that there are certain the animals hero, that are just that inherently looks like a hero evil. For yeah, the that's what I was talking about. Where there's wolves are just evil. Kind of apparently the all of them. Sure that maybe and, yeah, uh, I don't like that. Come from it. Does he know that dogs are bred out of wolves? I don't I don't think so. Maybe it's just snow wolves? I don't know. Maybe it's just snow wolves. the soundtrack again has this electronica feel that again was an experiment and by electronica feel we mean mixing them with uh, electronica that basically it, put these this are the credits for a much it. edgier movie it again, the, these are like the credits for like seven yeah, like, yeah. Like, the graphics yeah they'll appreciate or they're more surreal like a more surreal film yeah the, the biggest mistake the they made was not making this look more stylized i've said that a hundred times for all you moviegoers out there i think i think the, the, the one thing you may or may not, not understand us. is these movies that are rated pg-13 a lot of them you'll notice they'll, they'll have sort of mer the big merchandising attached to them and as soon as as soon as a, as soon as a movie has a toy attached to it before it before it comes out in the marketplace immediately it sort of puts it into that pg-13 category i mean the movie that came out more came out this so, summer so and much Lost world and and men in black in particular and spawn 
Um, any 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 of those kinds of movies with action here? But I mean, I get what you're saying. The kids, yeah. the studios, yeah, you're, you're, you're even, even get it. Even the, get the, 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 the kids to it. Yeah, because you're selling toys to them. Sort of had had deals in Except place. Except for BBS. Where where there's no there's no there's no alternative. You you've made an arrangement with a yeah. That's a weird thing these movies have in common, right? The movie we aimed the toys at kids, and then and we very quickly made a greater order director's merchandise. So. Even though when we Except first I'm sure they were planning on, that all along with um, this. Yeah, that's not the case with the As most comic but books ever come, there was probably more of a possibility of a, a harder rating like the HBO series. At least I don't think it would. But, but yeah. the movie is such a larger animal because of the Sorry. investment that's made in the motion picture. Than we have not gotten to the point special, that for example, I made fun of that got us to watch his commentary. HBO special oh, design here for midnight Friday HBO. nights. The movie is a movie that comes out that the public sees in the summertime. The movie, in terms from a corporate point of view, from like uh, you know, from a from a, even from a Todd McFarlane corporate point of view, had to be PG-13. So, like Mark said, he only had the opportunity because I mean, we shot the movie in 63 days. Um, we had originally They're planned to shoot the movie in 70 movie. days, but like we, right here. we yeah, made the decision, yeah. Mark and I did, to trim seven days to pay for the digital health sequence. 63 days to shoot a special effects action picture is, basically is, is does tight. That. The and it's true, comics. Mark only had the opportunity to shoot things once. Fortunately and for him, and doing also with because what he was you know, John Zama was sort of so outspoken kind as of saying, clown, I didn't sell out, are but I'm sorry I did all the same time. Things, uh, to watch. And, I mean, that's uh, what that whole look how edgy it is, we took the edge off so we could get away with it. what we're doing the narration for right now, of Spawn, that will be out in in December, and it does have 220 picture changes and it has um, it has an uh, infinite number of oral changes there are um, we, we did a complete remix of the uh, a, a complete recutting of the picture a complete remix with uh, the same guys who mixed the uh, the first version of the picture Steve Pedersen uh, remixed the whole movie from front from beginning to end and uh, it's really uh, it's not I wouldn't say it's a completely different movie but it's, it's definitely, like uh, there's for, definitely though. some of the funniest yeah. lines in the movie got cut out that were not in PG-13. Some of the more violent scenes in the movie got cut out and they're in there. And uh, I mean, there's really a lot of, uh, for me, even showing it to some of the people for the first time as a complete film, there is a lot of stuff to look at. You're, and uh, you're absolutely it's a right. much more this accurate representation in of how Mark and I wanted to be. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a better movie. This whole like, no like about turning it to the side, moving around and stuff, like. Is that the end? Actually, I'll just say no. a couple of more tidbits that well, I just remember. This, because of our, because of and, and our little the, altercation, the song's written for and inspired by soundtrack. They actually had to modify like, the employee handbook. Yeah, you know, it sounds in our honor. We're very like, happy. Like edgier and, and creepier and more yeah, disturbing than the film. Did the ice turn out come out before or after this? Was that Did the ice turn out? The funny thing is, one day I was at a party. It's before this thing. I can tell you the drugs on the nose. I think it's like '96. I'm not sure. This woman comes up to me, who I knew, and she was worked at security. And she goes, "That's a good point." Um, you're Mark Tapani. Go. What are you talking about? But it's. She goes, well, I'm a new security guard. I mean, yeah, it's I directly it's taking stuff from, from the comics. Well, it's well, it's not part of our this. training. Um, part of our training is how to do There are tracks that are more... And the case study that. is, is really great. bad. I, like, that doesn't make any sense. You can't use it because it's about Angela. Yeah. Oh, no, The Hunter is, is great. I mean, that's one of my favorite payoff. songs in that genre. Yeah, I think it's great. You know, that soundtrack is not brilliant. Or But I like that. I like Violate, man. Go Violate! We actually had pictures taken with Mark and I at the front gate. Bono! That's cool. That's cool. No, these these credits are better than the whole movie. Yeah. Bono. When can we come back? This should be your favorite ending credit. Could, really. Yeah, I'll make Do that make list. No one's gonna <laughs> want to anymore. watch that. Well, yes. oh, we Iron Man Three. There's, there's, there's some Marvel ones that are great. If you're wondering who sent you that bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, and, and for what reason? You know, usually when you do a commentary, you have that thing where it's like, <laughs> how long do we keep going? Do we go and through the credits? Knows, who They're doing it for us. Face we know when, when to stop. Yeah, so it's we when they stop. Oregon, <laughs> and we sent Doug Norby, uh, what was that, an evergreen Oh, monster. yeah. It's a monkey. We sent him a monkey. <laughs> a, a topiary monkey. <laughs> <laughs> a topiary monkey. No, Doug Norby was like the head of the I head love head the head smearing a, on the grass. Head. Head. And there are some, there are some guys that are going to be like, Lucas hey, you, you put mutagen on my name, I can't see it. Like uh, rebel arts, and you know, they spend all this money, and then it would go out of business. That's psychoplasm, well. man. Those those credits, those people are going to come to Scott, life out of those, right those credits. Time, we, we, went, we took a little trip to Portland, and uh, we went and we were shopping in Portland, just sort of hanging but out. You know what I was with psychoplasm? Because I can make my own hell city out of my thoughts. And you wouldn't open it, probably for good reason. 
I didn't say who I'd it like came to from. thank Graham Morrison but, uh, so for bringing that idea to the Spawn comics. The security opened up the box and they delivered How dare us not do anything else? It said, it's all coming back, back to me, Eric! And it ended up in Jim Morris's I'm, backyard, who's the I'm current head of Lucas so, Digital. That's one of those wire monkeys that they grow moss all around. Why are we still talking about? I don't know. Cameron? George Lucas? What about the deer penis wine? Jim Morris? I know this story. Alright, let's talk about the movie. Uh, All right, let's talk about the movie. Was that like an outtake that they just threw in the credits? Because I'm not, I'm not sure. That was all hobbled together. Maybe that was the beginning. Maybe that's like a conversation they had at the beginning, and there was like, all right, let's talk about the movie. It's, it's hard not to wonder how much of that we, we were actually, like, they were actually looking at the movie and how much of it they weren't. So yeah. what's weird is. So what do we learn here today, well, Eric? Well, that my memory has turned against me. Oh look, look, look! Or Laser Pacific. Or, or we just talked over it. But I distinctly remember when I was a kid watching that commentary and them saying how great the HBO series was and specifically the phrase that, like, if you miss one week, you will be lost the next week. We might have talked you have over to, it. We might have talked over it. I guess I this was a it. really weird thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, but it's your idea for us to talk while watching it. Are we just going to watch it? No, probably not. Everything we do has even, to be even, in the service of even if we have making been videos. recording. The, yeah, but even if we haven't been Our recording. Our life for you, Damien! <laughs> what does that mean? That's the omen. Uh, when, oh, when, I, you when know that, what? I've never actually watched oh, it. Oh, there's a girl that jumps off the top of the building and she yells out, My life for you, Damien! <laughs> it's, it's that. Somebody used to put that in the Batman comic. So we used to have somebody like <laughs> fall really hard in love with Damian Wayne. I bet you that's happened. I bet you, you that's someone probably already has already happened. It. Yeah, someone's thrown that reference in somewhere. I'm sure. Maybe either maybe Talia Al Ghul does it. Yeah, some maybe. Place. Anyway, well, folks, uh, thanks a lot for watching this bizarre sorry? experiment. Yeah, and sorry if this was unwatchable, but um, we enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, slash it was all right. It was fun. Didn't all at the same time. I thought it was fun. Oh, I'm sure myself. you did, but I'm I had to look at Spawn again, <laughs> Eric. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, folks. We sure appreciate it. We'll see you again with lots more videos here on Geekvolution in the not too distant future. I am Captain Logan. I, Merrick. <laughs> we'll see you next time.